Hamilton's names will continue to be available uh, somewhat of the way into the run. Uh, Tifa will be cut off at the time that Puexel destroys the first reactor. Aerith will be cut off when he enters the Airbuster battle. And Red 13 will be cut off at the 60th floor of Shinra Tower. So you want to get your donations in for those names before that. We also do, of course, have the bid war between saving and killing the animals. Subsequent to that, we have the file name bid war for Ocarina of Time. The current leader is Oxworth941 at $594.35. And the runner-up at the moment is LeBlanc with $440. So that can still be a potentially close race. Don't be afraid to get your donations in for that. We also recently had all the other donation incentives that were outstanding right. met, uh, which I think only included the Melee Finals and Adventure Mode speedrun in the bonus stream, uh, which you can expect to see tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you might not be able to see it right now, but it looks like uh, Puexel is planning to play the game in disco colors on the LCD over here. I'm sure we'll get that particular technical issue fixed and uh, get on with the run pretty shortly. But in the meantime, we'll resume with some donations. We have $25 from David78, said already donated during this run, referring to the Dark Souls run. But I had to donate again for the right way to play Dark Souls 2. I loved both runs, and I loved seeing this game destroyed. Great job to all the runners and organizers. This has been a great event. And we have $50 from Ian McCulloch, and it says, What? How? Why? That, that's not... I don't even... What did this man do to Dark Souls? I had no choice but to donate again. This run was absolutely inhumane. You know what else is inhumane? Killing the animals, which is what this money will be going towards. Here's to the million. And we have $10 from Corey H. It says, Puexel's Final Fantasy V run at SGDQ was the very first speedrun I ever watched, and I've been hooked ever since. This donation is dedicated to him, to all the great people at AGDQ, and to my grandfather, who is currently battling stage 4 cancer. I 
this again. Just to clarify, uh, Puexa will be playing the PC version of Final Fantasy VII, and it happens to be a very, very special piece of software with some very special uh, restrictions to how it needs to be played in order to achieve maximum speed. So that is the main cause of the uh, technical delays here, but uh, it looks like we're getting close to readiness. And we received $56 from Man Darker. It says, I challenge all viewers to donate a dollar for every hour of entertainment this event has provided. An amazing value for the quality of entertainment and for a good cause to boot. One dollar an hour from each viewer from now until the end of the run would be enough to reach our goal. But this community is not about being satisfied with reaching goals. We smash them over and over until the job is done. And just to echo that sentiment, if every person viewing this stream right now were to donate just a dollar or two dollars, we would very quickly reach that coveted one million total that everyone really seems to like because round numbers are awesome. So please don't hesitate to donate, don't delay.
Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Ooh, hello. it works. Testing, testing. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. It's dynamic. <laughs> it says dynamic. Mm -hmm. It does it. Okay. Can you handle it, bro, Sencha? Oh, I can handle it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can handle it. <laughs> I should pose a so this is the PS4 phone. version, yep. just so everyone knows. It's out today. I have, I have a special advanced copy of the PS4 yeah. version of FF7. Yep. They, st they stopped releasing games, game information on E3, and now it's at AGDQ. So uh, as usual, Puexel has a giant pile of notes. <laughs> yeah, which is all of four pages this time, only two oh, of which wow. I really need, if, if, if at anything. I had to leave the binder I'm at home this time. I'm just taking up me right now. <laughs> Sadly, that no signal screen actually has better pixelation then <laughs> <laughs> well looks fine here to me uh it should be one yusuke nara yusuke sounds like it. <laughs> suta yusuke yoshita kamano no. uh I'm sorry, any people that made this game, if you're watching and hearing us butcher your names. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with this. I <laughs> basically just do I need to come up there, Maddie? After every bell, Hiro Katsu. It should be four by three. Well. It's well, you have to set the cus set a custom resolution. <laughs> Akira Fuji. 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 Six six forty by four eighty ought to be fine. Toshi Saseki. I'm assuming you're using a four three layout. Here's Fixing here's stuff from the couch. This is my AGDQ here. experience. <laughs> 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 There's no arms on this sofa. What are you talking sushi. about? Sushi. Sushi. That's good. Toshi. The best credit is still to I, come, I think though. he's more awake than he was for the Final Fantasy VI run at SGDQ. Oh, my gosh. I slept so much during that run. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Rosentia. Wait, were you running it? Parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> he'll get wor he'll get a worse time when he gets back home. <laughs> uh, I guess we can do that. All right. On uh, five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh. Yeah. yeah! So I'm Poexel, this is Final Fantasy VII. I ran this for Awesome Games Done Quick 2012, which was a long time ago. <laughs> the game has changed a lot since then for speedrunning. What I'm going to be running today is a uh, category that's only existed for a, about a year and a half, I want to say, thanks to uh, the discovery of a really, really, really major uh, glitch called the Yuffie Warping Glitch, which is we're going to be starting to use roughly two hours into the run. Um, it was uh, Neo Heart that originally discovered the glitch, and then it was uh, Zero Kynos who did basically all of the routing to uh, make a speed run that utilizes it. So uh, I guess sit back and enjoy the ride. To put it in perspective, uh, a runner named Cart7 actually got one of the best runs that's ever been done on console recently, and uh, it was a 728. The estimate for this run is three hours. So uh, the difference between the console version and the PC version is uh, really, really big. So yeah, it's, this is not going to be the Final Fantasy VII you're used We're going to be breaking this game really, really badly. Luckily, we're not using the MIDI music. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. yes. This is the this is the Steam version of the game, which had a patch uh, 
provided about a year ago from Square Enix to fix the music. And Thank you, Square yes. Enix. <laughs> did Thank something right. you. No, I played this when I was a kid, okay, on PC. Uh -huh. And, like, besides all the registry errors that it gave me, like, the, the, like, the final battle doesn't even have the singing. It's just like <laughs> beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Should we do a quick roll call, I guess? Oh yeah, yeah roll call. <laughs> roll call would be good, yeah. Uh, I'm Skate for a living. Terranium Anchor. Obda Jr. I'm Brosentia. That's Plexel. There, these are people. <laughs> these are the people. <laughs> these are the adoring fans. Hours. Yeah. Ooh, oh. <laughs> All aboard the hype train. Yes. Now, oh, <laughs> we'll there be seeing is... a lot of the hype train later on. Oh, just so you know, there's a lot that has to deal with step counter in this game. This screen actually doesn't affect it at all, but um, soon after that, he'll be manipulating a lot of the step counter in order to get the battles that he wants. A lot of them are to affect battles towards the end of the game so that he just doesn't die really fast. Yeah. That still might happen, but uh, <laughs> it'll be much less likely to do so if I... Uh, if I get the manipulation route right all the way through Midgar. Yeah, I think worth mentioning is, even though this is the PC version, they didn't bother like fixing the frame rates on any of the battles or the or anything like that. So basically, the only part that's in 60 frames per second is the battle transition. And the menu. Yeah. And the menu. <laughs> and the yeah. menu. Are you serious? Very yeah. So the the battles are still in like 15 frames per second because right. they didn't didn't bother fixing that. Yeah. So see you'll hear. Okay. Here we're, you'll see him yep. uh, walking a little bit into a cutscene. That's to set up a little bit of the step counter we were talking about earlier. And then we have a donation center uh, for all the nameable characters. What are we naming this one? We are naming Cloud Ferdi. That's capital F, lowercase, E-R-D-I. Oh, only one E, right? Yeah. Correct. And for those of you at home, we still have about... Is that uh, right? Yep. Okay. We still have about three or four more characters that you can name, so you can get your donations in real quick if you want to have your name or whatever name you'd like be one of the main characters in the game. Yeah, so I, I have seen a couple people donate for um, Sid and Kate Sith, but there's a reason they're not and listed what's on the tracker. Barrett is going to be Caleb Hart. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <Woo! laughs> Yeah, shoutouts to this game for having nine character, nine letters that you can use for naming the characters, which is huge for most uh, most RPGs. Oh, speaking about donations, though, I know with Humble Bundle and the donations through PayPal, we're less than a hundred thousand dollars away, and it's very possible that if you keep them coming, we will reach one million dollars by the time this run is over. I would like to see that. Uh, I would like to see that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be kind I think of we would all like to see that. <laughs> Woo! Mm -hmm. no, no pressure, though. No pressure, yeah. <laughs> all the pressure. Yeah. Hey, the pressure's on the people watching to donate. I'm just playing a video game. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to play games. We do have $40 from Frayed Not, and it says, So much awesome and so much charity. Keep up the good work, and let's push on to that one million. Such charity, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this would be a bad time to mention that I absolutely hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I secretly knew that already. <laughs> Looks like Caleb Har hates it too. <laughs> <laughs> So you know, while while we're enjoying this run and uh, and talking about donations, I think uh, I, I would love to get uh, get you guys to, to play a little game of the donations. Uh, if you can, when you make a donation, if you can send in a comment, what I'd like you to do is please uh, explain to Puexel and uh, to our couch commentators what your favorite Final Fantasy. Game <laughs> <is>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and my why? Goodness. Please, please be detailed. Uh, and this is not a bid war or anything. I just would like to know what your reasons are and uh, which you think <laughs> is your favorite. Uh, I know that this is something Puexo really loves to discuss. Uh, we, we, we never hear this conversation. No, ever. I have never. I think never, this is bad yeah. in his chat. Like seriously, you go. It's on the FAQ. It. Yeah. yeah, check the FAQ. Yeah. So, like um, one of my awesome couch crew was saying earlier. Um, 
the random encounters that you get in this game in uh, dungeon type areas aren't actually random at all. They're based on some uh, they're based on some math between the number of steps that you've taken in areas of the game that have random encounters and also whether you're walking or running at the time. So whenever you see me uh, walking for a couple of steps instead of running, that's actually to manipulate the random encounters. So um, I, w by, um, I did a walking pattern right before I named Cloud, and that actually let me skip a battle that I would have normally gotten into in front of the reactor before I entered it. And I'll be doing that periodically throughout the rest of the run, both to um, skip a couple of battles that I'd otherwise get in Midgar, and then also to manipulate uh, battles for a really uh, intense part of the run near the end where it makes a huge difference. Yeah, so when was that all discovered? Um, it's, it's really, it's been known for a long time, but it's within maybe the past two years or so that it's been, it's been used in single segment runs. Uh, originally it was kind of more of a multi-segment uh, speed run uh, Today technique. It's still, uh, people are still adjusting step routes for all the categories of Final Fantasy VII, so step manipulation itself has been known for a long time, <laughs> but the actual routing we're using for it has been adjusted daily. Mm -hmm. so. Like this is a pretty different manipulation route than I'd be using like if I was playing the PlayStation version of the game right. or, uh, or if I was doing, just playing without using the warp glitches. So for the early game bosses, uh, your limit game your limit gauge is pretty important. If, mm -hmm. if the Guard Scorpion would have attacked the same character twice, or if he does a really high damage roll on one of your characters, you can get in an extra limit break before he raises his tail mm -hmm. in this fight, and letting you kill him a little bit faster. Uh, looks like that didn't really happen. Yeah, because it, it targeted Cloud and Barrett and didn't do enough damage to either of them to fill their limit gauges. Also, I'm really bad at following directions, so I'm going to attack, even though Barrett's <laughs> telling me not to right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was a rough, uh, there was a bad translation between the uh, Japanese and English versions of this game. So on the top of the screen, it says uh, attack while its uh, tail is up, which is not supposed to happen because you get attacked right there. Uh, Puexel here it actually does attack Guard Scorpion, so you can get uh, both his limit gauges full. Yeah, because it's very, very important to have both Cloud and Barrett's limit gauges full before the Airbuster, the second boss. Yes. So I really want to stay, get be set up for that before I kill Guard Scorpion. Yeah, in case it wasn't obvious, there's a lot of just preparing for battles correctly in this run. And it's not just having the right equipment or whatever equipment. There's a lot of other things you need to make sure you have in the right place or you're going to have a really tough time. That should do it. All right. There we go. First boss down. Pretty mediocre fight, but it's very, very uh, luck dependent to get a kind of an optimal guard scorpion fight. Because for that, I could have shaved about two full rounds off if it had filled Cloud or Barrett's limit gauges before raising its tail, but uh, that's not something I can control. Right. You do have the added benefit of that not happening, that both your character's limit breaks are full for the next fight. You don't have to worry about filling them between now and then. Mm -hmm. the See, the timer at the top left hand corner, uh, this is supposed to be you uh, escaping this reactor. Uh, the game gives you a very generous 10 minutes uh, to escape the reactor. <laughs> yeah. uh, as you'll see in about a minute or so, uh, that's going to be a lot more than Parcel needs. Uh, really, the only thing you need to do is come here and save Jesse. Yeah, slowest bomb ever. Do you have to save Jesse? Yes, yeah. you do, because otherwise, yes. uh, Biggs, does, for some reason, only has the passwords to one of the doors at the front of the reactor, so. You are not able to leave until you save Jesse. And sadly, Avalanche is not a particularly well-organized terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> Especially since the code is only one button. Mm. <laughs> That's a really easy code. I could do that. Well, it's only a PS. So that's game. more uh, random encounter manipulation <laughs> yeah. there, that walking pattern I did. We have a $20 donation from Mr. Bell, which says, My favorite Final Fantasy is five. Evil trees, princess pirates, and a sick jog system that is the reason that game is played every year. Oh, and Gilgamesh. Never forget Gilgamesh <laughs> and the battle. <laughs> a legitimate answer for the first one? Wow. 
Well, okay, so I'm getting a bunch where people are like, oh, my vote is die hard for the next <laughs> Guys, this is AGQ, AGDQ 2015, not 2013. That was <laughs> good. Wow. <laughs> So as oh, you can see there, weird. there's about a low, a, a low eight left on the clock, maybe a high seven. I was, I couldn't see, but it was yeah. Like no, but the bomb went off yeah. anyway, so clearly the timer was wrong. Right. Yeah, it used Darkwing Duck style counting. Well, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, they're not a very well organized. And by the way, uh, for those of you all watching this right now, be paying attention to these next couple of uh, FMVs <laughs> that you're going to be seeing. Uh, it'll be very important later in the run. I won't give away all the spoilers though. So I guess before I kick it over to Vulagen for some uh, tasty donation comments, um, there's a number of uh, cutscenes throughout, sprinkled throughout Midgar that uh, give you like lots of dialogue choices or like orders that you talk to certain characters. And if I was doing a full game run, I'd actually be able to uh, use that to manipulate the gold saucer date coming up, uh, or the, well, it would be coming up midway through disc one. But since we're but uh, we're not going to be playing that part of the game for reasons you'll have to stick around and find out. Um, I'm just picking the fastest possible options for all of them. So I uh, was a I was a jerk to Aerith and uh, told her to go away instead of buy a flower from her. Yep. Sadly, no date with Caleb Hart this year. Sorry. <laughs> 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 All right, well, I just, well, I, <laughs> I just want to remind you guys that uh, we have cut off uh, the bid war for Tifa's name, uh, and we have a name for that, which I will give to Puaxel as soon as he needs it. Uh, we will be, reminder, we'll be cutting off Eric's name. Uh, the Airbuster, the next boss. Correct, when Puaxel starts fighting Airbuster, and we will cut off Red 13 when he gets to the 60th floor of the Shinra Tower, that is at the end of the epic <laughs> stair climb. <laughs> And we do have several donations that are not related to the thing that I asked you guys to donate about. Uh, so I will spare Puexel for the moment. Uh, we had $20 from Super Saiyan Fife. It says, had to bid during my favorite game of all time and one of my favorite runners. Really hyped to see this run. This is the game that introduced me to RPGs and I put way too many hours into it. Good luck Puexel. And as much as I love animals, I can always get more. Save frames, kill animals. Thank you very much. I want to note, though, that saying it's his favorite game means that it's his favorite Final Fantasy part. <laughs> Good yeah. to know. Wow. And we received $50 from Jeremy S. It says, in memory of Pop Dave, who bought me FF7, my first major game. Great marathon so far, and I'm looking forward to a strong finish. And we have $200 from Get Daved, and it just Ooh. says, thanks again for a great event, AGDQ. And we have $500 from Straveris. It says, the animals must die. <laughs> to, yeah. clarify, to clarify, it is a 100% item completion run. Animals do not qualify as items. <laughs> <laughs> also, they make for tasty barbecue. <laughs> So there's a little glitch he could do right here if he walks into the bottom of the screen to, to trigger the guard coming out and being like, you can't come through here and talking to Jesse at the same time. Uh, it's a little tricky, it saves a, saves a conversation. About, about five about seconds, seconds, I yeah. believe, yeah. What's that called? It's called like paralysis. Paralysis glitch? dodge glitch, yeah. yeah. There's a couple uh, cutscenes sprinkled throughout the game that you can skip. And I'll, I'll explain it a bit more when I actually do it for the first time, which is about like an hour and a half from now. Again, with this FMV, definitely be uh, paying attention to these the last couple of FMVs mm -hmm. you saw. You'll be uh, amazed. Be hope, familiar with them later. Hope you like trains. <laughs> <laughs> it's Doom, Doom Train's first appearance. Mm -hmm. Not to derail the conversation, oh. but it looks... Oh, you started I, already. No, I love the animations here, okay? Like, this little person <laughs> goes to the light pole. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, wait, no, they're not swinging around it yet, are they? <laughs> that's a different one. Oh, that's, no, that's it's theirs. the wrong one. We will okay. see that later, but you're okay. getting ahead of yourself. I just really want him to swing around the light pole. <laughs> <laughs> it's adorable. 
Get his uh, fire. Get his fireman on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be doing a little time saver here too, where normally before you can enter Tifa's bar to continue the story, you'd have to wait for Barrett to chase away all of the uh, non-Avalanche members, basically. But if I just leave and then immediately re-enter the screen, then they all magically disappear and I can get <laughs> in immediately. Because the PC version of the game has a lot less in terms of loading screens. Right. Yeah. That one, hel that one helps a little bit more on this version than yeah. uh, the PlayStation. Yeah, certain models of the uh, PS2, which we use for FF7 speedrunning on console, it helps, but uh, some don't. Uh, what's the name for Tifa? The name for Tifa is the Kingdom Hearts uh, community name Toji Sucks. That is all capital letters, <laughs> and the uh, Sucks is spelled S U X. Yeah, shout out to Toji. I've met him uh, this week from the Kingdom Hearts community and everyone else in the Kingdom Hearts community. Uh, <laughs> this was this was pretty much their uh, doing here. So uh, yeah. thank you all. Yeah, for big that. yeah, big shout outs to the Kingdom Hearts community for a really really awesome run of KH2 yeah. Final Mix this yeah. morning. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah, give him a round of applause. applause. Yeah. yeah. I know uh, many people's sleep schedules died to uh, watch that run, yeah. so, yeah. uh, including my own. I sadly had to go back and watch that one. Yes. But Same. Yeah. It's on my list. Same. On my list. I if I didn't have this run to do today, I would have watched the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. I managed to catch the end of it, but I didn't get to see the whole thing. Oh, no, the guy is full of sin over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this for a while. Uh, thought people thought when uh, Final Fantasy X came out, uh, the big boss in that game is called Sin. So people thought this was somehow a reference to uh, Final Fantasy X, but I believe uh, it's been <laughs> figured out that it's a Shinra Information Network. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. <laughs> that sounds like what Sin and FF10 would be doing. That's yeah. a very unfortunate acronym. Quick note too that I mean, the reason I'm playing the PC version, like uh, Abda said a bit ago, is because the loading times are quite a bit faster than on the PlayStation version, but. Uh, the wrong war glitch that I'm going to be doing later on the run only works on PC. And the uh, the reason it only works on PC, uh, to my understanding, on the console version of Final Fantasy VII, memory is overwritten all the time. And uh, part of the glitches that we're using this run have, have to do with uh, memory that's being stored <laughs> in the game. But in the PC version, since uh, computers can handle a lot more, or could at the time, uh, memory isn't overwritten. So that's really a big aspect of uh, why most of these glitches work. We have a $25 donation from IFD Delusion, which says, Final Fantasy VII will always be my favorite FF. The story is amazing, limit breaks, amazing characters, etc. P.S. I did cry when Aerith died. <laughs> Don't worry, I did too. But fortunately, it won't matter in this run. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? This run has, um, has sensitive people in mind. <laughs> I freely admit I cried too the first time I played this game and beat Disc One, even though I'd been spoiled massively in advance. Yeah. I was more like, I put all my experience into her. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me wonder just how many people who ever played this game ever managed to actually get her level four limit break. <laughs> I would love to meet somebody that could figure it out without a guide. I mean, I, I got it, but I used a guide. To I know uh, Zero Kinos does it quite often in his channel for a certain mm -hmm. run of this game that he does. <laughs> you guys all got it? Wow. Oh, uh, Maybe not on the first. That's why it was, always, it was news to me that Demon's Gate is actually hard, because every casual playthrough I did of this, I had great gospel. By yeah. Then. Yeah. Uh, Skate, are you inviting us to also have a category discussion in addition to Best Final Fantasy? Because... I, I mean, I didn't say that, but I'm also not going to say no either. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this game in the Final Fantasy community by far has the most categories, and a lot of that's due to this version. There's just a lot of really cool things you can do with this version in terms of uh, glitches and warps and uh, what options you have to do. So. And uh, what uh, Poexel just did right there, he just skipped a tutorial which teaches you how to use Materia, which is the primary use of like spells and uh, moves in this game. Uh, we don't want to watch that though, I think it, it's like at least two, two or three minutes, minutes yeah. long, yeah. 
It's funny in this version because the menu runs at 60 frames a second, so the uh, if you're mashing the OK button, the text boxes just, they look like subliminal messages almost right. with how fast they appear and disappear. You will use the material system. <laughs> you love the material system. That's why I put lard in my coffee. I believe this is the only time in the game you hear what's Barrett's theme. This is Barrett's theme. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? If you well, if you take if you get the Barrett date in the gold saucer, oh, that's true. it's yeah, here then about too. That. How could I forget about that? Ah, <laughs> uh, this is fantastic. We're receiving some rather strong opinions in these. Uh, <laughs> 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 we got a uh, fifty dollars from Reverend Verse that says Final Fantasy VI is easily the best Final Fantasy. Any opinions otherwise are incorrect. <laughs> well, so, do you understand what you've done? <laughs> I, so, you know, if I you think you disagree, he does. Feel free to send exactly. in some money <laughs> and yes. and and express your own opinion. Uh, we also received twenty-five dollars from Mark H. That says, "Here's to my favorite Final Fantasy, the best designed one, the one with no flaws, and the best story." <laughs> Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask if he was talking about Mystic Quest, but. <laughs> yeah. And we have $10 from Lightning, which says, My favorite Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy 13 because hallways are cool, and so is Lightning. <laughs> Donation goes to Runner's Choice as long as it's the right choice. Killing so the Quaxel animals. is just going to do a really quick menu here, uh, switching some items out. Uh, and he also grabbed a free high potion from one of the uh, cart attendants in the train. Yeah, so he's deliberately running out the timer here because it's uh, step counter manipulation. Correct. It's also just faster in real time, too, because, I mean, each um, each train car you make it through lets you skip one screen worth of train tunnel in this next segment here, but there's a lot of text uh, you, on each train car, so it does it, even though you get an extra encounter because of having to go through this tunnel, it ends up being faster than going all the way to the end of the yeah. train car. Each train car uh, costs you about 15 seconds in real time, and uh, as you'll see here from most of these screens, Pluxel's have been going through this a lot faster than 15 seconds. So like, right yeah, here, that's... that's like Four. Four or five so. seconds, yeah. One thing about the, the step uh, yeah, the step counters that manipulation that we're doing is every fight in this in this run, if done correctly, is gonna be the same as, you know, every practice, so that one's always gonna be a back attack mm -hmm. with those four. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, grass strikes, I think they're called. There's okay. a lot of enemies with very unusual very names very in this game. Yeah, this game. game doesn't, like, throw enemy names at you. You have to actually look at them. So. So as you can see there, again, you pick the second option there. Otherwise, you have to go through about four, five, six uh, text boxes. So that saves a little bit of time. And you're also going to grab that ether. Ethers are yeah. selling. Pretty much every item that I'm picking up at this point is actually to sell later for money for uh, a nice little cache of weapons. Yeah, he's going to be using a lot order. of grenades early in the run. He's the main source of damage. Yeah. We have a $50 donation from one Essentia. Oh my Ooh. gosh. Uh oh. <laughs> it says Hi, Puexel, Essentia, Volgen, and all my fellow RPG runners. I'm really hoping you all will sing One Winged Angel during the final battle. <laughs> I know my girls and I will be singing here at home. Aww. <laughs> I'm sad I couldn't be there, but I'm looking forward to seeing everyone at RPG Limit Break. Mm -hmm. And do you really need to ask me what my favorite Final Fantasy <laughs> is? <laughs> it's 10-2, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Theta Rhythm. Yeah, we know for a fact. I think she's playing through it again. Uh, which one, which one was her favorite song again? Was it Thousand Words or A Thousand Words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, we'll make sure to sing A Thousand Words for you during One Winged Angel. Yeah, thanks, Essentia. Wish you were here too. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Don't worry. We'll we'll get you another copy of Ten too, so you'll never, you know, never be alone without it. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally, we received $50 from 11D, which says, Final Fantasy X-2 is the best, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a consensus now. What can Good. we do for you? Do 
There's so much wasted space in this place. No kidding. <laughs> Shinra skimps on interior decorators, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so just a reminder, the uh, cutoff for the heiress name is coming up pretty soon here, right. so get, if you're going to snipe it, do it now. Yeah, just a couple minutes. Or if you want to just barely miss getting her name, you can <laughs> donate just a few minutes after. <laughs> That's a good strategy, I think. I was really disappointed the first time I played this game that there wasn't a boss right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you're just impatient. You yeah. just needed to wait two more screens. <laughs> And one thing to note that might just seem trivial for most of us that run this game, but uh, Voxel is running away from every single encounter. And uh, that's for PC version and console version. Uh, I still find it kind of remarkable that we can go through this game without really grinding out for mm -hmm. experience uh, in any version, any category of this game that uh, pretty much stands. So it's a, I find that really impressive. Yeah, there's a couple of very specific fights that he uses to get giant piles of experience that you'll see later. And that's really all you need for this right. run. Yeah, yeah, because uh, unlike in a lot of other Final Fantasy games, you do get experience points from bosses that you fight in this game, and quite a bit of it too. So you're able to uh, both ride on that experience and also use strategies that make it so that your level and your equipment aren't really that important. Right. Well, there's also the fact that members of Characters that you have that aren't currently in your party still get some experience as well. Yeah, fifty percent. All right, if you want to give them a second for this, this is a kind of precise little mini game right here. First yes, try, every try. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the window for that is, but it's definitely in the frames. Correct. It's a really, really tight uh, trigger. Uh, and the weird thing about that little mini game, it's used to open this door over here, but there's actually no audio or visual cues. Uh, the visual cue, the only visual cue that's there. If you see it, it's too late. <laughs> so you really need to like know beforehand when to hit yeah, the It's about there. a second and a half after you clear, um, I think it's Tifa's text box, before you need to press the, uh, the OK button to press the switch. You basically just keep failing until you get it right. in, yeah. in casual play. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and uh, cut off the uh, bid, uh, bid war for Eris's mm -hmm. name. So we'll be naming her in about two to three minutes. Oh, we should have had an Aerith versus Aerith bid, <laughs> bid war. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, in the Japanese translation, I don't know which one's which, but uh, in the Japanese it's version. It's Aerith in the Japanese yeah. version, and Su can mean either S or TH in, uh, if you convert it to English. Right. So sometimes we'll call her Aerith, sometimes we'll call her Aerith. I interchange <laughs> them all the time and just don't even think about it. I cannot hear that helicopter without hearing the sound of a lawnmower turning <laughs> on, too. <laughs> All right, so coming up here, this is Airbuster, the second boss, and now you're going to see why it was so important for me to uh, max out some, uh, some of my uh, character's limit gauges before I got here. Because this is an automatic side attack, and um, the battle also has a unique mechanic to it where if you hit Airbuster in the back, you get five a five times damage multiplier and bam. <laughs> One other neat thing about limit breaks <clears throat> is that the game runs on like a, a kind of a queue system, so any actions that are mm -hmm. queued get put into a stack and then they just kind of execute that way. But if you use a limit break, uh, it pops itself to the top of the stack, so you can right. use that to to um, you know. Uh, get more attacks in before an enemy can attack right. you and, and mm -hmm. make faster kills. Yeah, and I believe, I believe that's part of the reason why I can kill Airbuster before it gets a single attack off. It's not a counter, too. It's just because I'm chaining limits together, basically, after my first, uh, first attack by Tifa. All the drama of this scene taken out by the models. <laughs> <laughs> Of course he can't hold on. He doesn't have any fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. till later. Not till later. He gets fingers. Don't worry. Remastered and all in the PC version. They never gave him <laughs> true fingers or 
faces or mouths? Well, they gave him, they gave him mouths. Yeah, they, yeah mouths. They, they gave him a lot of mouths. You'll see yeah, several very, mouth very mouths. Yeah, some very interesting mouths. As a note, there are some dialogue differences between the PlayStation version and the PC version. Yeah, they yeah. fixed a couple yeah. of the they more... They fixed a couple of the more kind of glaring typos and grammar mistakes, but I, I do kind of wish they'd have done a full retranslation of the Japanese I think, script. I think, yeah... But you and everyone else would like a little bit more of a remake for this game. <laughs> it's probably the most requested remake. Uh, definitely in the RPG. Can of worms community. opened. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have a $50 donation from Sorts. It says, Thanks for running my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy VII. The amazing soundtrack brings me back to Christmas 1997. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll live 500 years to play the remake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks to the runners for fighting the good fight against cancer and kill the animals. Yeah, strangely enough, nothing that you say to Aerith in this cutscene here has any effect whatsoever in the gold saucer date. So calling her a drunk, that's okay. She still wants to go out with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Probably how she gets most of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Volusion, do wow. you have the uh, name ready <laughs> for Aerith? As a matter of fact, I do. It's a very clever name. I'm I'm a fan of this one. It is Sean Bean. Mm -hmm. Sean Bean. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no space, right? Well, Sean Correct. Bean is there's really gonna no like space. this run, no then. Space. He's really gonna <laughs> like it. You like that? Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Sean Bean, the flower girl. <laughs> We have a $100 donation from my brother, Fast B. It says, after spending months and months on this game in high school, I'm looking forward to seeing it get torn to shreds for a great cause. My FF vote is for six, since Kefko was the only villain who actually won. <laughs> P.S. Speaking of great causes, save the freaking animals. They're just trying to help. Yeah, that's another topic that gets talked about a lot in, in streams that I've been into, at least, is... Which, which Final Fantasy villains were actually the most successful? Yeah. And Kefka usually comes out on top. Yeah. I'll agree with that one. Yeah, Kefka's uh, from Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> I believe I know at least one person in our community who will tell you that uh, Kefka only succeeded in opening a hole in the ground and killing about three villagers. <laughs> 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 and I guess he caused some property damage as well. All right, so coming up here, we've got a little bit of kind of a minor mini game where we have to help uh, Aerith escape, or I'm sorry, Sean Bean escape from uh, escape from some soldiers here. And you do have a bit of flexibility with how exactly you do it. Um, for, for marathon safety, I'm actually taking a route that's a little bit, a few seconds slower in real time, but it takes fewer steps. So uh, this is just just to give me a little extra buffer room in case I make any mistakes with my uh, with my uh, step counter manipulation route for the rest of the run. So the step counter is saved along with your save game, so... When I said route, too, I just meant which barrel I pushed over, because right. the, the fastest route through this minigame is to push one of the barrels onto the right soldier and then just tell her to run away from the other two. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember what happens if you tell her to fight them. Yeah, you end up you get fighting. In, she gets yeah. to fight, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> just her. She's yeah. in the back row and does like zero damage. Actually, there, uh, and during that minigame, there's actually three different ways uh, an encounter can happen. The first one is by selecting to fight them. The second one is by pushing the wrong barrel onto one of the soldiers. And the third one is by actually walking around up there. Puexel wasn't moving around, but you can actually move around up there. And so, like he said, it's way where you can actually make up some steps. Uh, if you're a little bit ahead on the step count, but uh, he decided not to. Yeah, that is an area that has enemies in it, and you can fight the little hedgehog pies that are famous <laughs> in Final Fantasy IX for yeah. the. the I cannot, I cannot think about or see that mini game and keep a straight face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sid Frog mini game. Oh yeah, King Sid. That's what he is. The little frog yeah. trying to get the key. Regent Sid? 
I can't remember. Regent Sid Fabul, and then some generation number I forget. Right. <laughs> So yeah, this is a goblin encounter. Uh, Wexel's gonna want to try to get away from this as quick as he can, uh, because these two here uh, will steal items from your inventory, and the only way to get them back is to kill them. And uh, at this point in the run, we pretty much need everything in our inventory to buy what we need, which are gonna be grenades. However, uh, later in the run, we'll, we we will be going back to that encounter for other reasons. Yeah. Now there is a reason why you attack. Right? Yeah, I, I was doing a safety strat for that uh, encounter too, where because I have the battle mode set to active, um, I can basically gain credit towards my party running away during attack animations. So by having both Irith and Cloud attack the thieves, I wasn't actually trying to kill them. I was basically just trying to delay their turns by a few seconds to give me enough time to run away before they actually try to steal stuff. Now you get to see your twirling. Oh, yay, twirling. Lamppost guy. All the scrolling in this house is really <laughs> uh, that's weird, actually too. not. That's actually not until after the pillar climb. Oh, are you serious? Oh, really? <laughs> oh, <never mind. laughs> I'm so Just, bad. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so is Abda. <laughs> the hype is real. <laughs> twirling hype? <laughs> twirling. Wexel, I have a couple donation comments coming in on a somewhat common theme here. Uh, I have $90 from C.O. Plank that says, I've been watching these runs for years and I truly appreciate what each and every one of you do. I just made my friend Anti-Drug start playing this game and he is so slow. Wexel, please show my friend how to do this game faster. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, uh, you asked for it. <laughs> and I also have $5 from Chisado that says, I actually liked FF10-2 and FF8. But my favorite one is FF12, and I'm planning to learn how to speedrun it in the future. Thank you for this event. This guy is happy. To okay, hear that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, you can see Poxel's walking right here. Uh, the kind of gimmick for that part of the run is uh, you're supposed to be trying to escape Aerith's house without her knowing. Yeah, so that's actually walk. yeah, that's not encounter manipulation because there aren't any encounters in Aerith's house. At least I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she hopes not too. Just but um, not, if not. you run before you leave that screen, then she wakes up and you have to do it again. So yeah, did that person learning Final Fantasy XII, please message me on Twitch. I'm <laughs> a, a very excited person right now. Poexel just bought some very important items. Grenades. Which, I don't know, just giving so many grenades to all of your people. <laughs> yeah. Just pockets full of grenades. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's like 68 you had, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a really, really dangerous town, but uh, yeah, but grenades are a combat item that do about like 130, 140 damage when you use them, and uh, it's using grenades is just a much faster and more consistent way to win battles uh, in Midgar uh, compared to how you normally play the game, which is to level up through fighting random battles and then like upgrade your equipment and materia. And it's interesting, in a run on console, uh, using grenades as your primary form of dealing damage is actually the best way to do it for about two and a half hours, which, uh, as me, when, when I learned uh, this speedrun, I thought it was just going to be attacking, like I did when I played it casually. So I find it kind of interesting that they uh, didn't try to make an emphasis like in any strategy guides or anything that they use grenades. Yeah, well, then after that, you graduate to Molotov. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then you graduate to, graduate to more fun stuff like Aqualung and yes. uh, Power Soul. Or slots, if that's allowed in your category. I never really quite understood why that was its own category, honestly. But. Uh, slots? Well, no slots. Slots yeah. versus no slots. Uh, so uh, what your enemy anchor here is talking about in the console version of this game, we pretty much have two primary categories. It's any percent or slots and no slots. Uh, slots uh, is a limit break that uh, one of the characters in the game, Ketchy, uses. And uh, if you hit it a certain combination, it'll uh, destroy any enemy in the game in one shot. 
Um, but I believe Wexel was one of the first runners uh, to actually do no slots, which he ran at uh, AGDQ in 2012. 2012, yep. Um, that actually predated slots being used in single segment. Right. Too. Yeah, uh, slots actually was not, uh, there was no slots run that had actually been done faster until about earlier last year. Uh, Car, Car and V, uh, probably one of the best Final Fantasy speedrunners out there. Uh, he was pretty much the first person to uh, beat the no slots time using slots. Uh, but as I told y'all earlier, uh, Cart 7 actually now is the world record. About a couple days before AGDQ, he got one of the best runs we had ever seen uh, on console, uh, and that was a 728. Yeah, big shout outs to Cart 7 Absolutely. for uh, just coming up with so many really, uh, really ingenious new strategies, for that, a lot of which apply to pretty much all categories of the game, too. He's got the world records for both of the main console categories, and he definitely earned them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, here we are in Walmart again. Yes, Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> We have a special mini game coming up soon that we need yes. to uh, yes. prepare for. Oh, soon. yeah, the best mini game. So, I mean, anyway, in our, um, at this point in the story, we need to get into Don Corneo's mansion to uh, rescue Tifa, basically. And uh, the bare minimum that you need to do in Wall Market is get a dress and a wig. Uh, but there's extra items you can get that'll affect who Don Corneo picks for his date. And uh, in my route, I'm going to be getting a tiara and a cologne. Which, and uh, having the best possible of both of those will make him choose Cloud. And uh, do it, having him pick Cloud, in addition to being hilarious, also um, lets me skip two fights that I'd otherwise be getting in Corneo's mansion. And then the time to get the tiara and the cologne is less than the time the fights would take. Here he's going to pick the uh, Korean barbecue is all right. There's going to be a lot of just seemingly random choices that uh, Puexel is going to make throughout uh, this section of the run. And that's all, like he said, to just get the best items possible. Apparently there's major drama among the uh, shopkeepers at Wall Market, too, because I'm having to buy... Uh, protein drink from the vending machine at the end to give to the materia shop owner because he got kicked out and isn't under for some reason that I'd rather <laughs> not know. Based on the sleazy undertones of this town, probably not something you want to know about. <laughs> we have a uh, $10 donation from an anonymous donor. It says, shout out to my boy snowboarder as a profession, doing that sweet commentary. And my main man, Vulgin, rocking those donations. Oh, hey, that's me. Also, good luck with the step count, Puexel. No pressure. There are only 130,000 people watching. <laughs> <laughs> also, the best Final Fantasy game is the mobile game, Final Fantasy All the Bravest, because I love giving Square Enix money. <laughs> So the point of getting the first the uh, first the item coupon and then the digestive is so that I can get the cologne in the bar here. And then I'm also the questions I'm answering here are setting up what kind of dress I get. We also have ten dollars from Steel Cow that says the best Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy all the bravest, deep gameplay, fantastic story and absolutely no abuse of the micropayment systems at all. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little social commentary in these donation comments here. Yeah, basically no one plays that. <laughs> well, a, a few people play it. I don't know. I don't know. It, y if you have a like iPod or something, you can get it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it, is time, is to sales. it is time to uh, do a little mini game here to get the wig. The yes. squats mini game, which we had some very generous donations for uh, for our boy Caleb here to uh, show, oh. us how it's, show us how it's done. <laughs> Whatever. Right, so everybody knows. Everybody knows. You want to give him the mic or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so everybody knows, right? Every time you do an FF7 speedrun, it means it's leg day. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. Everybody's gonna do squats. 
No slackers. Everybody, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's doing squats. Yeah. All right. So proper form. Mm -hmm. We'll do the tutorial is. first so we can see how it's done. <laughs> okay. Go all right. But yeah, proper form. Mm -hmm. You want to go all the way down. I don't want to see any skimpers. <laughs> yes, yes, all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. Uh. <laughs> 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 Speed it up a bit. You need help, Austin? <laughs> this thing is like crazy. I'll just take it. Not done yet. Keep going. All right. Yes. All right. That was that was the practice run. Now we gotta do the real thing. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. Everyone got it. All right. Here we go. People in the crowd, feel free to go as well. Yes. All right. Here we go. Let's go. I want to see this. If you don't know what you're doing, you scratch your head too. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, done. Almost done! Almost done! Almost done! Let's go! Keep going! One more! Let's go! Yeah. Most exercise like most of us got this week. Yeah. <laughs> Man, now I wish I could have been in on that too. All right, so now I've got all the items that uh, that I need to both get into Corneo's mansion and also to get Cloud chosen. So now we will do so. <laughs> this way. Mm -hmm. well, we probably have time for a couple donations if you want to read them off. Sorry, I was catching my breath. Uh, <laughs> it's rather strenuous compared to all the other nothing I've done this week. Let me just catch up. All right. Big so. shout outs to everybody that donated to uh, make yeah, us make absolutely. fools out of ourselves on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we should have invited them to join us at home, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Indeed, that was $3,385 and 26 nice. cents donated. Thank you for all that. Thank you. <laughs> new, new YouTube hit. We received a twenty dollar donation from Kirby One Six Three. It says, "This Final Fantasy opinion thing inspired me to donate an extra time. So great idea! Thank you. I'm glad I had it. I'm donating to let everyone know that FF Seven is objectively the best game in the series <laughs> because it's the first one I played. Also, let's get that million, everybody." We have $25 from Max Knight 1010101. He says, Max Knight back with my pen ultimate donation. Nothing much to say, but that Mystic Quest is most definitely the best Final Fantasy, <laughs> and anyone that disagrees just hasn't played this wonderful game. And we have $25 from Placeholder Pigeon. It says, been watching all week and had to get off my butt and donate. Thanks to all the runners and staff for making such a great event for an awesome cause. And we had $20 from Anima321. Hi everyone, awesome AGDQ this year again. Thank you all for what you do. FF7 was one of my favorite childhood games, so I had to donate during this run. By the way, let's kill the animal. Just a quick side note, this room is really creepy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to know. I'm kind of glad that the for. TV I played this on when the game first came out wasn't didn't have like high enough contrast for me to really be able to tell what any of the stuff in the bottom of half of this room is. <laughs> <laughs> See a wood stove oven, so they probably make like food. Yeah, yeah. s'mores maybe. Mm -hmm. As a mace, <laughs> like not bear mace, like like a, like an actual spiky mace, you know. <laughs> They probably right. just have their medieval fight club down there. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, it's just a meat tenderizer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, all the items that Fwexel specifically decided to get in Wall Market affect what happens right here. Uh, Don Corneo here is picking between the three ladies, uh, one of them being Cloud in the center. Uh, and to get the fastest outcome, we want Cloud selected. So, drum roll. Hey! This healthy looking girl! Yay. <laughs> Yay. 
Real quick, before this next uh, encounter, we've got a $1 donation from Agora. Ooh. Oh, hey, Agora. It says, Bulletin, why would you do this? <laughs> <laughs> I can barely donate this marathon. Ugh. Final Fantasy Ten Two is the best Final Fantasy. I, I plan on becoming the Ten Two Queen. What is my life coming to <laughs> save me? I definitely give a follow to Agora. She's in a very, very, very good Final Fantasy Ten Two runner. Mm -hmm. She definitely is. And we have another community donation: twenty dollars from No Cash, No Cash. Oh, oh. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, really good Final Fantasy Four speedrunner. He says, "Good luck, Puexel. I'm excited to see an awesome run for such a great cause. Thank, Thank you, you, No Cash." No cash. But his name's a lie, though. He just donated. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, and I'm glad that it's a lie. It's well, it might not be a lie now. <laughs> Secret trap door is in your bedroom. Why do you have that? <laughs> Why do you need that? <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> Yeah, this is like kind of the first look at uh, Shinra Corp. Uh, you have uh, Reeve and Shin President Shinra and uh, Heidegger all here. I think President Shinra only gets like two scenes in the whole game, and one of them has a, he has a sword sticking out of his back. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, actually, well, you got the Airbuster one, oh, okay, this, yeah, and then the next yeah. one. I believe that cigar he's smoking is only in the PC version, too. Mm -hmm. That's what they gave him instead of a mouth. <laughs> Because he already had so I think he already had his mustache in the original version. All right. What's a billionaire without some cigar chomping, right? <laughs> so can you get preemptive apps in this? No. Okay. Not this is actually one of the few it. boss fights on the uh, in the console version. I'd probably in the PC version as well, where you can actually get a preemptive boss battle where you start the battle facing the enemy's back so you can do double damage on your first uh, on your first it's attack. a lot more meaningful later in the no warps run on Genova birth right yeah so there's a specific order he's gonna hit this boss in to uh, mm -hmm. trigger sewer tsunami as many times as possible yeah casting bolt with on my on the first round uh, it actually does less damage than uh, a grenade would but it also manipulates apps' AI so that um, it does it alternates between using Sewer Tsunami, which hurts itself as well as me, or doing nothing for uh, hopefully the whole rest of the fight. Yeah, and Sewer Tsunami does much more damage to the boss itself than, than to your party, so it's definitely... I'm also trying to use a pretty subtle trick with the kind of manipulating when Sewer Tsunami fills Tifa's limit gauge to help her get another grenade off uh, before Apps' next turn. That was a uh, strategy developed by Cart7 not too long ago. And... Nice, nice. got the quick kill. Very good. <laughs> So if, yeah, so I basically was able to just squeeze uh, ease off one more grenade before its third sewer tsunami, which uh, would have actually done more damage to me than to the boss. It's almost like he learned from his mistakes or something the first <laughs> two times. Oh, I'm supposed to throw it over there. <laughs> it says pounding my chest, I'm supposed to jump up and down. <laughs> <laughs> We have a five dollar donation from Dan Bartlett. It says Final Fantasy VII is the best because, as everyone knows, this game are sick. <laughs> That's a very, very well known typo that unfortunately got fixed in this version. Aww. Um. And just to remind anyone that's joined us recently, uh, we're about 55 minutes into this run. Um, basically, we're looking for you guys in the donation comments during this run to. Share with our runner, Puexel, your favorite Final Fantasy game. It must be an actual Final Fantasy game. I'm not accepting Legend of Dragoon, Die Hard, <laughs> or Suikoden 2, no matter how much you love or are thinking you're clever or whatever. It's gotta be a Final <laughs> Fantasy game. I want to know the reasons why. Please be uh, detailed. Is nothing they all suck an acceptable answer or not this time? 
Uh, if that's your opinion, you're any maker. I'm sure there are no, lots of people who would like to donate. <laughs> and, if that's uh, your opinion, we have some matters to discuss. And tell you why one. you're wrong. No, I'm, I'm just on this couch to just I hate on this game. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't forget, keep donations coming in because we're getting really close with our donations as well as the humble bundle together to getting a million dollars. So uh, we we could do it during this run. We're really really close. Very close. Oh wow, a lot closer than I thought. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, holy crap, so close. All right, so this is kind of like a, a small puzzle. Uh, Puxel's gonna be moving these trains around so he can eventually get to the next screen. Yeah. If I'd have made some movement errors earlier on and I was behind on my step counter route, I could have actually moved the first train again, and then it would take less steps to get uh, to the exit. But I'm actually pretty, pre doing pretty well so yeah. far, so I don't. Uh, that, that, I mean, that's slower in real time, so I don't need to do that except kind of as a, as a backup strat. Yeah. Also, also, he calls it a puzzle, but you basically just go in one train, and then go in go the other. other. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, you see Puxel taking small steps throughout this run. Uh, movement in this game is not very friendly, uh, and it takes very, very many runs of practice in order to be able to be a, a very good at it. Uh, so being one or two steps off your step count sometimes can be really bad. So uh, it takes a lot of concentration. Uh, to be able to route that out and to be able to execute it every single time, it makes it look a lot easier than it really is. Yeah, because keep in mind, this is a 3D game that I'm having to play with only uh, D-pad controls, as in four D-pad buttons, just because the game came out before the DualShock controller. And they didn't, I mean, the PC version lets you use analog uh, joy controllers with it, but if you do that, then you have to use that for menus too, which I don't want to do. <laughs> So I'm just using D-pad because that's what I'm used to from uh, playing on PlayStation console. Like for example, sometimes you can be holding up on the D-pad and on one screen you'll go up, but on another screen you'll go like Side northeast ways, or northwest yeah. or something. Yeah, so. the camera perspective sometimes can be a thorn in my side for this game. Right. For example, this area. Yes. Yeah. Optimizing movement up this pillar climb is actually really, really difficult yes. just because of how many corners I have to turn as tightly as possible. I'm also being really cautious too in that I'm kind of hesitating for a little bit after I come out of a fight just to make sure I remember where I am. Because uh, in a more, in a kind of a, like a PB attempt, I'd be just trying to memorize that so that I'd still be holding the right buttons coming out of encounters. Yeah, for so example, right here, he's yeah. on a corner. So when you come out of this battle, it's going to be either really close if he needs to hold up for like maybe a quarter second and then go left or just mm -hmm. go left. So yeah, right there you can see he needed to go up for about a quarter of a second. So that's what he's kind of talking about. It, like it's much better to take like a half second loss just to make sure you know what you're doing. Because uh, once you mess up the step route in this uh, run, it's pretty much over in terms of knowing what encounters you're going to get, which mm -hmm. can sometimes end the run really quickly. So. Yeah. The route that Pux was taking today is... Uh, I would say a lot safer than, say, a PB attempt or a world record yeah, attempt mm -hmm. route, but even so, uh, getting one bad encounter at the end of the game is is going to spell death pretty quickly. So this is the uh, Reno boss fight. Uh, it's pretty straightforward when it comes to uh, how you deal with it. Yeah! Yeah! Let's say that's the easiest slots ever. Yeah. I mean, there's only one <laughs> yeah. game. That's kind of what slots looks like in a uh, Final Fantasy VII on console, uh, any percent slash no slots or slots run. Uh, it's a very, very more precise trick, though. Uh, but that's kind of what it looks like. It has like a reel, but there's three of them. Yeah. Um, and as you can see here, there's a pyramid around Cloud. Uh, Reno picks one random character to put a pyramid around, and they can't really do anything until you destroy the pyramid, but it actually ends up being quicker to just use your other two spare characters to throw grenades. Him doing it on Cloud is actually the worst possible thing yeah. you can do because he will not Reno will not attack characters that are in a pyramid, and that makes it well. Actually, well, he didn't. He did it before he used Braver though, so I'll still have that ready for uh, Rufus. So right. okay, I mean, if I'd have uh, gotten it off and then he pyramided him, that would have been pretty bad. Yeah, raise your hand if you game over it here for the first time fighting Reno too, because he pyramided all three of your characters yeah. and the game didn't tell you how to break them properly. Yeah, see, for example, when I was talking about earlier when it's kind of not obvious that you're supposed to use grenades, that's a perfect example of it. If you don't know you're supposed to use grenades there, 
nor do you not know you're supposed to break those pyramids. It's really easy to die. Yeah, because you, I mean, you break the pyramids by attacking the character that has it. Right. I was like level 20 the first time I got here. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Too, it doesn't explain it too well how exactly you're supposed to fight Reno safely. I think I had Blade B. Well, oh, one thing I, I <laughs> said at the start of the run, too, is I actually set fixed camera mode uh, because the battles probably look a little bit differently than most people, most people's experiences with the game. And that's just my personal preference, basically. Um, if the camera is moving during uh, battle actions, that can kind of throw me off sometimes as far as how the targeting works, as far as using the D-pad to select targets. And uh, it may cause a little, it may reduce lag a little bit on certain animations too, but um, I, uh, I don't really have any uh, empirical proof on that. All right. So personally, I find this to be one of the most uh, odd cutscenes in the game, just because the music that's coming up yeah. here. This music is in the credits for the game too. Right. It's, I believe uh, Haydn's The Creation. Appropriate name for massive destruction. Like that poor slide right there. So yeah, it seems like all uh, all of they're destroying Midgar, and then yeah, which is very out of place to me. <laughs> no, it's called a juxtaposition. Okay, <laughs> you take something brilliant or something terrible and put something beautiful next to each other and they highlight each other that's yeah. how it works <laughs> we can tell who the teacher what, what is he on said this, on <laughs> that's how i've always viewed it too i always thought of it as like they're the the calming music at the top is basically just saying that shinra planned all this yeah. and yeah. you just know showing this is how, exactly so how nonchalant is president yeah. shinra yeah. is about having killed hunt, like massive numbers of people in yeah. his own city yep See, you're learning. <laughs> <laughs> Video games are learning. <laughs> Video games are art. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I would personally love to have her since she has a teacher in school. <laughs> That'd be the best class ever. <laughs> Some people think so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this cutscene here, uh, when they destroyed the reactor, uh, it cut off a part of Midgar. So they're trying to figure out a way to get to it. And uh, Barrett, uh, his family, or his daughter, is in that other side. So he's really trying to make an urgent uh, movement over there so they can reunite. That poor slide, too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it'll never get slid again. <laughs> it's still happy, though, so whatever. At least that little dome cat is smiling. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vulgen is probably good, another good time for donations. Yeah. Let me just quick point out too that yeah. this next screen I'm about to move through is is one of the most difficult Absolute, in the game absolutely. for movement optimization I... too. I'm sure everybody watching this that's played the game has probably fought many ho house enemies yeah. while just trying to figure out where to go exactly to get yeah. out of this screen. I personally hate it still. So. Yeah. If you want to read some donations? Yes. Yeah, so take it away, Vulgen. So we received a, a bunch of donations related to the squat uh, demonstration earlier. Uh, we received twenty dollars from Grift. Donated a second time this marathon again for my grandma who passed away from breast cancer several years ago. Thanks for getting me to get off my butt and squat for thirty seconds. <laughs> kill the cancer, kill the animals. And we received ten dollars from Eight Escape. I joined in at home. Squats for life and save the animals. And we received $17 from Alex203, $1 for every squat I just did. <laughs> Squats kill my knees, and the dollars kill the animals. We also received $23 from BRHH that says, Shut up, don't cry, here's a dollar per squat. <laughs> Since we received another, a number of those dollar per squat donations, uh, if you also did squats at home, feel free to donate a dollar per squat, or if you don't remember how many you did, or you did too many because you're such a beast, uh, you can feel free to just donate 10 or 20 or something like that. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, this is the best. Twirl. And you get the weird scrolling right next to it. Wee! Twirl. Twirl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, run's over, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was all he came for. This was a uh, lamp, lamp swinging RTA. Yeah. <laughs> a, a new category for this game. <laughs> we also received 
$250 from Ooh. Space Drake. It says, hey guys, donating to Limit Break Cancer for 1 million damage and maybe get some Final Fantasy swag. I'm looking forward to seeing Cloud's adventure broken like a twig. <laughs> also, Mystic Quest is the best for real, and it should be speedrun at some point, because you can do it fast. Good luck, guys, and let's Frank or Z it up and save the animals. Uh, uh, there are actually are a lot of people that have run uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest and a bunch of other Final Fantasy games. Uh, if you want to check out all those runs, uh, FinalFantasySpeedruns.wiki.com. Uh, we pretty much have a collection of every Final Fantasy run that we know of, and we put them all up on there in kind of a leaderboard style. But uh, it pretty much showcases uh, every kind of run that we've done. We also have a bunch of runners' resources for uh, notes and video guides and uh, save files sometimes for all the runs. <laughs> so um, definitely go check out that website. We yeah. put a lot of work into that site for the past year or so. Because yeah, one thing that's really cool about the Final Fantasy series for speedrunning is just how many ways there are to do it. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot of games that are very friendly for speedrunning as far as being able to reliably complete a single segment run once you've uh, put invested some practice into it. And uh, there's, they're all runs of all different lengths, too. Like, is the is FF3 any percent the shortest currently? Yes, uh, as far, I believe uh, Final Fantasy 3, any percent uh, for the Famicom uh, is the shortest Final Fantasy run we have. I uh, actually spent a couple months rerouting that game and saving 20 seconds uh, yeah. right now. I think the record's like six and a half minutes. Yeah, 621 oh, wow. yeah. by uh, Luzbelheim. Uh, him and I have been going at it for about two or three months now. So uh, shout mm -hmm. to him. He's uh, also an amazing Final Fantasy speedrunner. He currently has the records for Final Fantasy 8 and 9 on console, which are two of the uh, biggest runs we have right now. Um, but uh, Final Fantasy 3, any percent, is about one second away from beating Tass. Nice. So uh, <laughs> we put a lot of work into that run, so uh, shout out to them as well. Give them a follow. What's interesting as well is that these games are so big and so expansive. There are always improvements that can be oh, yeah. Always, yeah, always. Yeah, that's why I love speedrunning um, RPGs. It's just that there's always something new to try out as far as like a battle or equipment strat. Yeah. Even when people think the game is fully optimized. Like Final Fantasy IV is a really good example of that. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. game has just been so... So changed and optimized in over different the past directions year. too. Yeah, like there's 64 door glitch routes and the yeah. die the full hard. Game. It's <laughs> die <laughs> hard. The full game routes and just both of them have. For had those so of you at home that know about uh, FF4, any percent uh, is usually commonly nicknamed as die hard percent, and a lot of people don't know where that came from. This man right over here actually came <laughs> up with that name. Uh, it's. We all thank him for it. <laughs> well, it's because of the Die Hard run. You yes. know? There are lots of stairs, basically. Lots of, <laughs> lots of stairs. So, Quaxel here is going to force an encounter. It's just part of the uh, step manipulation route he's going to be using. Yeah, because the next uh, area that I can get encounters in after this one is one that has a fairly nasty glitch associated with it that, um, well... The, the short version is that if I if I get into a fight in that screen after a certain point, then I won't be able to run away from it, even if it's not really a boss. Right. So um, I'm forcing an encounter there as part of my route in order just to guarantee that I don't get one uh, when I get to that f particular floor of the Shinra building. So I've made this mistake too many times right here. He's grabbing batteries. Uh, the next area he's going to be going into, uh, you need batteries, and I've done it more than once. Where I batteries just batteries are not included with this game. <laughs> And it's just that that's kind of one of those things that kind of makes RPGs in general unique. Like, if you were just playing through this game, you would think to just come here and just keep on going forward as fast as you can, but you'd soon find out that you need batteries. Uh, <laughs> just, out of all things. Uh, Shoutouts to Avalanche, the uh, <laughs> known <laughs> terrorist organization, and their, uh, uh, their graffiti typos. <laughs> They didn't go to school. I mean, whoever's going and graffitiing Avalanche. <laughs> so he's going to put the first battery in this uh, this, terminal this, here. this propeller takes way too long to yeah. turn around, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so okay, hard. okay, you can stop now. now. <laughs> no, just now. Nope. Um, how about now? Or now? Or I don't know. <laughs> the battery also dies really quickly. Yeah. yeah. They didn't give me very good batteries, but they get the job done. <laughs> it's only 100 gills. So. <laughs> yeah, for three of them. For three. Well, so you need 300 for all of them, yeah. yeah. 
We end, uh, it's mandatory to get three batteries, so you have to have 300 gil to get the batteries, but in this run we only use two of them. The third one is to just get a uh, treasure chest up there. It's like a, an ether or something. So here an audio key is used probably to be quiet real quick. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really excited. <laughs> I've never seen you get a first try. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea why. I, 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 that's actually a lot more generous than the switch puzzle in the second Mako reactor, but... Uh, since I've started running PC, I've actually been having more issues with that pipe jump than with the switch puzzle. Just because the controller input lag is a little bit different from console. So yeah, Poxel Vazari, do you uh, think we have time for some more donations, or do you want to wait until the stairs? Oh, we can go ahead and start now. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, Jen, if you have some more <laughs> donations, that'd be a good time for it. But I'll just, I'll, let me actually just explain quick, too. At this point, you have two options for breaking into Shinra headquarters to rescue Aerith. Um, you can either go in the front door, which um, you have a couple of forced battles, and then you go up an elevator where you, get, you stop at a random number of floors that have random... Uh, Results: You either get into more battles, or you get like run into shared Shinra, uh, Shinra employees. And um, there's a very, very low chance that the ele going up the elevator could actually be the fastest route to get up there. But uh, it's only like I want to say like two percent or so. Yeah. So the take climbing up the stairs, even though it's pretty boring for a couple minutes, is the most uh, consistent way to um, to get into the Shinra building for a single segment right. speed run. Yeah, uh, I've done these stairs so many times now, but uh, you can actually go through these stairs really slow, really fast, depending on how yeah. well you're reacting. And just so I won't have to interrupt the donation comments, too. Uh, there's an elixir about halfway up these uh, stairs that I'm going to skip on purpose, just because I don't need it in this route, right. and it would be uh, taking up space in my inventory. Yeah, yeah. Ujun, if you had some uh, donations. Oh, I do have some donations. <laughs> I have a fair number of donations, as a matter of fact. We have a $50 anonymous donation. This one's pretty good. I've been wanting to say this for a while. FF1 has the coolest concept with time loops. FF2 has the most interesting level up system. FF3 is amazing due to the job system. FF4 is great for its story. FF5 has awesome characters. FF6 has the greatest antagonist. FF7 has the milestone greatness of first 3D FF. FF8 has perfect use of its draw system. FF9 was awesome for its want you to speedrun for Excalibur 2. FF10 was superb for its sphere grid. FF11 brought the whole community together for the first time. FF12 had perfection with the active dimension battle. FF13 was on the mark for a solid mid-battle style change system. FF14 has supremacy in its MMO loot handling, however, all of these pale in comparison to Final Fantasy Theatrhythm Curtain Call because it has <laughs> the music from all of these as well as many others. And we have a much more concise donation, $10 from Darula that says, Best Final Fantasy? Obviously Final Fantasy Adventure. <laughs> and I double checked, and this is not, in fact, uh, either Poxnor or Bowie the Hero. It is <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly yeah. enough someone else that actually likes this game. Uh, we have a few community donations. We've got forty dollars from Lag.com. Hey, hey Lag. Lag. what's up, Lag? And it says, "Keep on destroying those RPGs. I hope I'll make another run to add to the pile this year. Maybe Lord of the Rings: The Third Age. Mm. Go Puexel." And we have fifty dollars from Dethe. E3 Crescentia, a.k.a. Peter Zhang, he says, Hi, friends. It's been a blast at AGDQ this year, so I'd like to thank everyone on site and watching on stream that's been able to make this year's AGDQ possible. Special shout-outs to the on-site donations and tech crew and staff mom for the awesome job this year. Just a few more hours. Please put this donation towards the Zelda file name as Neil X Aya in, order of, in honor of my favorite speedrunner yet to grace a GDQ. Here's hoping you come to AGDQ 2016. And we have a $500 donation from Rakuen. Uh, this was actually a little while ago. My apologies, I didn't get to this uh, yet. But it says, I was looking through my Facebook posts a few months ago, and I found one promoting classic games done quick. Yeah. Five, five years have passed, and we've come <laughs> quite a long way since our first marathon. My family and friends have been dealing with cancer this whole time, so AGDQ really means a lot to me. Thanks go out to everyone, from staff to viewers, who make this event happen. You are all awesome. And so are you, Rakuen. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a $1,000 donation from Ooh. one friend of GDQ's whose name I'm going to butcher, Tommy Rafenis. 
I've been awake all week and just got home. The only thing I've seen of, GD of AGDQ was a video of Taskbot making Twitch chat in Pokemon. If the Taskbot guys are still around, this donation goes towards their choice. If not, then runner's choice. Uh, the Taskbot guys are still around, in fact, and we are going to be having a segment from them after this run and after Pokemon Green, so stay tuned for that. There will be more of Pokemon Plays Twitch. Who was that from? Uh, Tommy Urfenez of Team Meat. Oh, and by the way, we're cutting off Red 13 now, I believe. Oh. Yep. Yep. We will be doing that and getting the name ready for you guys. Okay, so this is this battle here is the first time I'm going to be using a uh, an FF7 speedrunning trick called the ATB wait trick. What I'm doing is I set the battle mode to wait before this fight, and then I'm, I queued uh, two of my grenades, but I'm holding the targeting cursor on the third enemy before I uh, before I actually do it. And uh, while that's going on, while I'm throwing grenades, the um, the enemies are not getting credit towards their next turn or ATB as we call it. So doing this lets me um, basically cancel like two or so of their uh, actions, so it uh, saves some meaningful time. This is also that glitched floor I was talking about earlier, where if I got into another battle after this battle with the three Mighty Grunts, before I got to the elevator, the, uh, the battle would be glitched and I would be unable to run away. So I forced an encounter as part of my route before coming here to make sure that that doesn't happen. There's a couple other places in the game that have that same glitch, but this is the only one I'm going to in this category. Alright, so personally, here's my absolute least favorite part of this game. <laughs> this run, anyway. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the uh, guard sneaking minigame. Uh, and it's fairly precise. Uh, I know Parcel's really good at it. Uh, we're probably just gonna watch him make sure he gets this, so uh, here we go. There we go. Good job. Nice. Yeah, the penalty for failing that is pretty steep, actually. You get forced into a pincer attack by two more of those mighty grunts, and then you have to start the game over again. Not the, Well, not the whole game, the <laughs> mini game. Reset. If it's a speed run, you'd probably reset over, <laughs> over that. But uh, Walking up the stairs is just slightly faster than taking the elevator there. Yeah. For this, because I'm yeah. only going up one yeah. floor here. So uh, the point of this mini game here is you're supposed to go into this library and read some books to find out this password here. Um, but in this category, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to guess blindly in the dark means of getting on the second track. Yeah, in other categories, uh, I might need the elemental materia, which is the prize for getting the password first try. But in this category, I don't. So I'm just I basically just try to guess. The uh, the third and sixth password, um, orbs and hojo, are always wrong. Right. So. If I guess the second password and it's still wrong, then I'll just go to the fourth one. So then here is also kind of another puzzle. I don't really consider it a puzzle, but a lot of people do. So yeah. my my theory on why this why the Shinra building has this floor on it is that it's a uh, it's kind of a hazing or something like that for um, if a Shinra employee leaves their access card at home, they have to uh, they have to do this in order to get to work. <laughs> when you're making that kind of money, you can. You have to have fun with it, right? Now, uh, Puxel can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe uh, that first crate that he got, uh, if you put that Midgard part in a certain slot, uh, it doesn't really matter what order you get the rest of the parts in. I think uh, it's the order you open the chests and not right. the order you place them in. Because, right. I, I mean, I've placed them in different orders and different mm -hmm. runs, and it's never affected the order that I open the chests. Right. You can only carry one at once. Yeah, the other yeah. chests are locked in before you place it, too. Mm. 
why there are monsters roaming around this floor too is kind of a mystery. They need to like do city development in this room here. There's monsters running need to around. bring guards or soldiers. They updated this model really fast after they destroyed Sector yeah. 7 too, by the way. Reeve doing his job, I guess. <laughs> Well, his, his other job is controlling a giant cat in Moogle, so... <laughs> Probably has some time on his hands. Yeah. Spoiler is only not really in this, <laughs> in this category. <laughs> <laughs> we received a uh, $1,250 Ooh. donation nice. from our friends at... <laughs> From our friends at somethingartistic.net. Ooh, nice. Ooh. And it says, gotta help you guys get to that $1 million. Here's another donation, which we must put towards killing those animals and saving those frames. After all, frames are hard to come by, and animals are all over the place. <laughs> and before the keyboard gets taken away from me, 9 is obviously the best Final Fantasy. <laughs> We are Palm getting Palmer is awesome, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> great hike, great, great hike. hike. La -la 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 -la. Yeah, shout outs to getting to $1 million during this run. It would be pretty sweet mm -hmm. to, yeah. to see the RPGs hit the mark both two years in a row. Just and the, uh, <laughs> the group that just donated is somethingartistic.net. Uh, they've yeah. made a lot of decals uh, for us at AGDQ this mm -hmm. year, and I've uh, personally mm -hmm. ordered a couple of them, so I can't wait for those to come in. Uh, but yeah, definitely check them out. They've been a huge part of this marathon, so thank you all. What would, what, if we do it, what are we going to call it? In the, oh yeah, it'll be a million dollar Omni Slash in this game. Yeah. Instead yeah. of a million <laughs> dollar go. Wonder Shot, right? Yeah, Village, we probably have time for one or two more if you have, uh, if you have any. Oh, we've got, oh, oh, we've got a bit, some cutscenes to go before more stuff happens. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic because we have a massive pile of donations just chilling here that I will go through several of. I apologize for dangling that preposition. We have $50 from Anonymous. Come on, boys. Obviously, Final Fantasy Dimensions is the best. Save the animals. We have $20 from the Angel Near. It says, what are you even guy what are you guys even talking about? You do realize the best Final Fantasy is the movie, right? Ooh. The Spirits Within. Spirits Within. Oh, no, Advent Children. Oh, both, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's two movies. <laughs> uh, we have a $4 donation from Carlito NSP, and it says, bickering over the favorite Final Fantasy is silly. Uh, I disagree, but that's okay. What I'd like to know is this. What is the most unreasonable Final Fantasy game to speedrun? There are a lot of good ones. There's a, there's a lot of weird ones. Uh, personally, the one that comes to mind is FF9. Uh, there's a battle nine hours into FF9 where you can just instantly wipe and there's nothing you can do about it. Shoutouts to Death Guys. Death Guys, yeah. Death guys. yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, I just watched a runner just yesterday. That happened to him nine hours in. It's just uh, that the run isn't that hard, but the RNG in that game is absolutely brutal. It's brutal, yeah. Some uh, Quexel here has also ran that game as well. Somewhere mm -hmm. in someone's chat, Chucklater has just busted out that image or link. Uh, yeah, <laughs> take his bets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chucklater, if you're damage. in SGDQ or AGDQ chat right now, please link that GIF. Everyone needs to see that. <laughs> also, we have a, uh, a suggestion from the donation station that says Final Fantasy 12 100% with a big box. <laughs> Yismat percent. Yeah, uh, not to spoil anything, but there's a runner in the Final Fantasy community who is routing out uh, something called Order of Ambrosia for Final Fantasy XII, which what? is pretty much getting everything in the that. game. That would probably be about a 40 to 60 hour RTA. Oh, so uh, no. I don't know when that's coming out, but I do know it's being worked on consistently. So please look out for that because yeah. I cannot wait to see that. And then spend a week watching it so you can you know, yes. <laughs> not ruin your life. That's not okay. <laughs> So right here, he's going to put the ATB to wait again to use the ATB wait trick for uh, this next boss fight. And then uh, Village in a few minutes uh, have uh, Red 13's name ready. Yep. Yeah, the other reason to have the wait on uh, is if you get poisoned during this fight. Which is pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. you can, uh, the poison doesn't tick while you're, you're selecting a command or our target. And even if you don't get poison, the AI for uh, HO512, which is this boss, its AI says to keep on using poison until everyone's poisoned. So <laughs> it's pretty much guaranteed to happen. Yeah. 
Poison isn't like too bad. It's not as bad in this game as in Final Fantasy X. It's one thirty second of your max HP per round. But when you're on fast battle speed, that does add up pretty quickly. If you're if you're uh, on active battle mode or or not using the weight trick that I'm going to be doing. And Red is totally just giving Hojo a hug right here. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Also, Hojo's not very smart if he thinks just putting two things in a room will make them breed. When you're the best of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and then the uh, the name for Red 13 is? That will be Red D-I-I. -I. That's D-I-I -I as in the Roman numerals for 502. With many thanks to the 502 crew for their numerous donations. Yes, thank you. That's game. a very thank creative you. name. So I would like to give a quick shout out to the French Restream as uh, we received a huge number of donations from them as well for the name Conor, uh, which I believe refers to an individual whose uh, father passed away due to cancer recently. Uh, we are very thankful for your donations as well as your support. Thank you very much. Using fire for one attack instead of a grenade lets me, lets me kill this boss in the same number of attacks, but conserve one grenade just because in this route I need uh, a few extra grenades than I would in a uh, warpless run. For some reason, the memory cursor doesn't remember targets in this particular battle, so I have to make sure I'm actually selecting the main boss for uh, all of my attacks. Nice, that was perfect. Yeah. So you do get a lot of accessories from bosses in this in this section, the Midgard or Sunra Tower. And he's basically just selling them all for money. Mm -hmm. And he's not even going to bother picking up the enemy skill materia here because he's never going to have a chance to learn anything useful. Yeah, that you want that, and, and otherwise, and just about yeah, every yeah. other run you oh, want that materia. Yeah. MVP lot. materia for most other runs. So you just put everyone in the back row here and uh, put the ATB to wait. Active. Uh, Skate, we have a uh, quick correction from uh, our good friend Alec K. Uh, oh, goodness. <laughs> and uh, he just wanted you to know that uh, the actual estimate for Final Fantasy XII 100% is more likely to be around 30 to 35 hours. Thank okay. you very oh, much. That's, no. that's <laughs> way more doable. So, yeah, the cat's out of the bag. Uh, the guy who's doing FF12 Order of Ambrosia is Alec K47. He's done a lot of oh, work. He's yeah, actually yeah. never done a, a recorded run, but he's put so much work and to helping us do a lot of uh, DP, uh, or DPS uh, for uh, fights in that game. He's helped out a lot. So thank you, Alec, for that. But uh, yes, definitely give him a follow. I cannot wait to see Order of Ambrosia. It's going to be a crazy yeah. run. Yeah, Alec was at the first Crystals for Life. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, actually did FF12 with him and Nitrid yeah. on, who was actually uh, another phenomenal runner. Yeah. Yeah. So the last got some more cutscenes here, so let's have some more donations. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, we just uh, shout out the French community, and we do happen to have a $50 donation from Kenan. Says, hey guys, Cannon here. My favorite FF is obviously FF5 because Bart's is usually renamed Cannon thanks to the awesome French community. Mm -hmm. Good luck, Puexel. I'm always happy to watch your FF runs, even if you don't traumatize ancient turtles in this one. <laughs> <laughs> and to Bersentia, I really did reenact the dialogues in my town with no name commentaries. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, oh yeah, he, he was telling me before. I'm going to be um, <clears throat> commenting on Town With No Name. What should I do? I was like, I don't know. Do something. Yeah. And so he <laughs> rewrote all the dialogue in French and did it. Yeah, all right. yeah <laughs> definitely want to give a big uh, merci beaucoup à mes amis dans la France. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> speaking of restreams, a lot of people don't know, there's actually three different language restreams this year in Spanish, German, and French. And I've uh, looked through all three of them throughout AGDQ, and they've been doing an absolutely phenomenal job. 
um, with commentary explaining what's going on in their respective languages, and it's just been absolutely amazing to see that. Indeed, they have all been tremendously supportive of our stream, and let's let's go ahead and give them a big round of applause right yeah, now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you very much to all our supporters around the world for all of your donations and viewership. We really couldn't do this without you. It's very cool to think that AGDQ has become such a, like a worldwide, worldwide event now. Worldwide, yeah. yeah it's... From a basement to the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And getting back on uh, more relevant topics, we have $12 from Andrea Rizzi, which says, Donate again to represent Final Fantasy The Spirits Within for Best Final Fantasy. <laughs> I like that movie. I thought it was good. Yeah, that's the other Final Fantasy uh, movie they've done. I saw it in theaters. Yeah, so, so did I. I. Except Sid's name is spelled with an S in the credits. It's Aww. really painful. Ooh. That's an oversight. I forgot about that. <laughs> no, that's like the worst part of the movie, okay? Like, <laughs> seriously. Everything else was perfect. Uh, Sid yeah. <laughs> and we received $300 from Mach 8, and it says, Final Fantasy VII made me love games back in 1997, and I haven't looked back since. Much love. We also have $25 from Christopher L., which says, Epic storyline spanning three timelines. Full character customization with the sliding scale from monster to human to robot. Jumping puzzles. Final Fantasy Legend 3. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that game, actually. Yeah, good music. Yeah. yeah. You and all the four other people that played it. <laughs> <laughs> and we received $25 from Avery1, which says, I'd like to say that Final Fantasy VIII is my favorite FF because none of the other games I've played can match the incomprehensibility of the plot and uh, Space Witches. Also, Triple Triad is one of the best FF mini games ever. Thanks for the run, and thanks for making sure we had the proper music. I might not have been able to deal with the general MIDI version. Yeah, speaking of Triple Triad and Final Fantasy VIII, we were talking earlier about how uh, routes in Final Fantasy games are being changed all the time. During AGDQ, a uh, runner in Japan actually figured out that, not necessarily in real time, but there is a way where you can luck manipulate cards, which Ooh. is something that uh, the FF8 community I know for a long time has been wanting to do because uh, it's an RNG element about an hour and a half in the run that can uh, really just end the run just because you're getting bad luck. So that's just a really good example of how just daily uh, things that either segmented strats, RTA strats, or uh, test strats, they're always being uh, found out. So uh, it's one of my reasons why I absolutely love the Final Fantasy speedrunning community. Also, real quick, just on the topic of Red 13's name again, we got $25 and two cents from Buzzard. My favorite Final Fantasy is definitely Final Fantasy VII. I didn't actually play the game all the way through until a few years ago. And while it shows its age at times, I fell in love with the world, the characters, and the story almost immediately. And this donation went towards naming Red 13 as Red 502. Shoutouts to my fellow 502 brothers. <laughs> Quick, surround him and kill him. We're pretty much going into the uh, end of Midgar boss gauntlet now after this cutscene here. Basically all of these characters have to fight uh, at least one boss. We start with uh, Aerith, Red, and uh, Barret fighting two bosses on an elevator, then Cloud has to fight um, uh, Rufus, and then uh, characters you choose get to fight Motorball. And then the fun starts. Yep. Actually, not right. Not right then. So here you get a chance to take uh, to either leave or take off Cloud's materia, and I'm choosing to take it off uh, in order to um, make the uh, strat for the Rufus battle more consistent. We received five dollars from Shy Ranger, which says, "Hey, Vulgin, you said you'd only read the real Final Fantasy donations." And yet you're reading all the ones for FF7. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. 
Just kidding. Boy, that's a that's a pretty weak JK at the end there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a pretty straightforward battle here. I'm just gonna spam grenades, but uh, I am gonna try to use either Barret or Red's limit to finish off uh, Hella Gunner, the second uh, form, because um, that'll um, that'll let me save a grenade for later use and also um, skip one of its attacks. This is another example of where grenades uh, as a speedrun or a casual player comes in handy because uh, I remember doing this fight as a child and uh, the only character here that can actually attack long range is Barret and I had no materia or anything on arrows oh. and red. So I really only had one character that could attack here and uh, I didn't have a save so I had to restart the game. So uh, I still remember that. Yeah. You can also use limits to attack yeah, long range. Sledge -hang. Right. Slight thing, that's one. This is a very long elevator, by the way. Those I'm pretty sure you can wait until more than 60 floors pass by. <laughs> Those wheels just don't seem very efficient, though. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not after I've been checking grenades at it for a while. It's it also doesn't have anywhere yeah. to go. <laughs> no, it's just got a very damaged suspension. Don't you see how much it's shaking? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So this uh, fight's actually a two-part fight. I can, can't remember the name of the first one. but That's 100 Gunner is the first phase, yeah. and then Hella Gunner yeah. is the second. And they, uh, they're pretty much the same fight. It's just there is a bit of course. RNG randomness in this fight, too. If, um, some of its attacks can put my characters to sleep, and that, uh, that'll slow it down if that happens. Oh, speaking of which. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I assume it's not worth taking the extra turn to wake them up. Mm -hmm. No. If someone falls asleep, you just have to sit through one more attack, I believe. I don't suppose it matters too much, but on the very first attack of this fight, uh, uh, Sean Bean got critted. Uh, so that's why her health is a lot lower than everyone else's right now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 3 HP. 3 HP. Don't die, Sean Bean. Don't die. <laughs> she made yeah. it. Yay. Also, a drill to the head woke her up. What? I would hope so. <laughs> So yeah, you, hear, you have the option to be able to menu or switch around party, uh, not party members, this is a solo fight, um, but we have everything we need ready. And this is also another boss fight that has two enemies in it. Yeah, so the, one of the keys here is if you don't have any magic material on it, you don't have any decreases to your strength and you can just uh, kill the dog with one limit break. In before 139. Yeah, so this uh, dog on the right here, it's called Dark Nation. Let's see if we get it. Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, okay. Dark Nation has 140 HP, and with the damage roll for Braver, the limit that uh, Quarksel just used, I believe the lowest damage you can get is 139, and that's personally happened to me before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that can be really bad. Otherwise, they were just gonna uh, toss grenades. Pretty important to have Cloud in the back row for this fight too, just because uh, if Rufus gets crits on you, he can he can and actually kill you. His face. <laughs> it's so flat. I feel like that fight is, is ripped out of Halo between bad players where one person just throwing grenades at one of them and the other guy's shooting at them. Alright, so now that we, uh, we just beat Rufus, Cloud's gonna head back downstairs and meet up with the rest of the party and then uh, we'll have uh, the Fast and the Furious, as uh, I like to call it. <laughs> Crazy. On the PC version, when I played the bike part, it was seriously about like two frames a second. It was terrible. <laughs> oh. I love seeing it so smooth. <laughs> Thank you for running an updated PC version. Or PS, PS4, you know? I think oh. we're all thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Caleb Mr. Hart. Mr. Caleb Hart. <laughs> <laughs> The, the music for this next part could not have a more fitting name, Crazy Motorcycle. <laughs> now, the biggest strat during this part has to deal with the kind of motorcyclists who show up. You want to have red ones because they're chickens. They just sort of stick in the back. 
the yellows and the blues are a little bit more aggressive. If it, it, the sooner that he gets all reds, um, the easier it becomes. Yeah, Doesn't, all you have to do is swing, yeah. and they won't. Because the the red forward. bikes have a pretty passive AI, so you'll you'll see when I get it set up that I have a I have a means of uh, getting. Well, assuming I do get it set up, there have been. Um, runs where I've made it all the way to the end without ever actually getting three red bikes yeah. on screen. It doesn't really save any time to get three red bikes, but it's a little bit safer because any damage that is done to you from the motorcycles in this car chase mm -hmm. decreases your HP values for the next fight. Yeah, it's not really a really a bunch of a big deal with no. the strats I'm going to be using, but it, uh, it could make it a little scarier depending on what happens. Probably a good time to read donations during most yeah. of the What? <laughs> it's basically an auto-scroller. Otherwise, I Parcel guess. is just doing a menu here to set up for the boss fight. That, uh, yeah, because I wanted to. Punches. I wanted Cloud to have all of my magic materia to raise his magic stat, just so that his bolt spell does more damage to the boss. So. All right. There's one. Well, we have a couple of donations from people trying to encourage others to donate. Uh, we've got ten dollars from Sam Kablem. To say, fellow viewers, let's make a survey donation. Donate a number of dollars equal to the sequel number of your favorite Final Fantasy game. <laughs> mm. I'm giving $10 because FF10 was my first real foray into JRPGs, and it will always have a place in my heart. Keep so up yeah. the great runs, and let's overkill cancer. Yeah, Puxel got three uh, red bikes here pretty quickly, uh, especially <laughs> for this version of the game. So uh, All he has to do is keep swinging, and yep. he doesn't have to do anything yeah, else. Right. I, do need to st I do need to make sure I stay in the middle of the highway, or right. else they do catch up. But yeah, if I'm in the middle of the highway, and it doesn't even matter if I'm which direction I'm swinging my sword, if I'm just swinging it, they uh, they know what's good for them and stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Village, you can probably read a couple more. We also have $5 from Captain Ahab, and it says, it's not a lot. But this is the only $5 I have to spare right now. Please give shout-outs to the 22 people on BroCraft watching. I'm putting them on the spot to donate with me. Also, killing animals. Uh, what's, say bro? what's this? We have $25 from Advocate of the Dark Chocobo. <laughs> it says, the time of judgment is coming. My master <laughs> will return one day to ruin the world of vision. Keep up the good work, Puexel. Good luck with this run. The donation is for the best announcer in the world, Brarsentia. Thanks. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> I just yell a bunch. That's basically all I do. That's basically <laughs> what you need to do. <laughs> we have $10 from Nanaki. Oh. It says, me and my fiance are arguing about which is better, seven or nine. Here's some money to strengthen my case. Seven is the best. <laughs> No other Final Fantasy has an oversized double agent Moogle robot carrying a cat with a <laughs> megaphone. How would you top that? <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's it for the uh, motorcycle auto scroller. Now I actually fight the final boss of Midgar, Motorball. It follows a completely fixed attack pattern, and it doesn't use its most dangerous attack until it, it's, I want to say, seven rounds, and it, it should be dead long before then. But uh, I'm going to try to kill it uh, a full uh, one full round before it would do. Uh, before we do rolling fire, which is its uh, ultimate attack. One quick note, uh, this battle is an auto back attack, so Flux will put all his party members in the front row so that they be, they take less, less damage from the initial hit and for the, from any physical attacks that he does. So yeah, Cloud's gonna be doing most of the work on this fight. Uh, even though we do have grenades, uh, Cloud has the uh, bolt materia, which uh, this boss is weak to lightning. Uh, elemental damage, so uh, that's why Cloud's going to be doing uh, most of the damage in this fight. That's, all, that's why I gave him all of my uh, magic spell materia too, even though I'm casting his bolts, because every every green materia that I have at this point raises Cloud's magic stat by one. Right. Which may not sound like a lot, but it does... Yeah, doing that incre generally it. increases the amount of damage each bolt does by about 20, which definitely adds up. And I'm delaying here as part of setting up a little AI manipulation that will let me kill it before it does anything else.
There we go. Nice. Very nice. All right, so that's pretty much the last part of uh, Midgar, what we call Midgar Escape. Uh, but there is uh, one last part that uh, Puxel's going to do. It's mm -hmm. called the Midgar Escape Glitch. Yep. Saves about this is the uh, only paralysis dodge skip that I'm going to do in this run today. And it's I'm, ba I'm basically going to be trying to talk to Barrett on the same step that I bump into the event barrier around Midgar. And if I do that properly, it lets me skip about a 40-second cutscene. It is pretty precise, though, since you have to do those two things exactly. Unfortunately, at the there's same no time. consequences for failure other than just wasting right. time. There yeah. is consequences for messing up, though. At least on the console version, if uh, you select the wrong option, the game will softlock, which has happened to me. Mm -hmm. There you go. There Third you try. Go. Yeah. Third try is pretty good. Nice. Go. Oh, right. that's great. And I believe Puxel. So Puxel's going to save here. Uh, there's a very small chance that on the way to calm the next area we're going to that mm -hmm. you get a pincer attack. Did I get a time check, by the way? You had a 146.35. Wow, that's pretty yeah, good that's for a marathon good route. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. no encounters there, so that's yeah. really good. <laughs> uh, encounters on the world map work differently from in dungeon type areas in this game. They use a different system that's a lot more random just because it's, uh, it's based on your in-game timer value at the time, which changes, it actually changes every half, or no, it's every full second of the in-game timer, so uh, there is a little bit of manipulation that's known for it, but um, it's, it's pretty difficult and usually involves having to look at the timer and wait for it to roll over a certain value. And here it would not be worth doing it too, you'd basically just go for calm and hope you don't get into a battle before you get there. All right, so the next about 20 minutes or so is the Calm flashback, which is, uh, <laughs> 20, we're going to get a lot of good donation comments so. read out during yeah. that, but I'll just, I'll just kick it off by uh, saying that the, after this cutscene here, um, we're going to be fighting a dragon with Young Cloud and Sephiroth. Uh, Young Cloud is only level one, actually. He has completely different stats and equipment from the Cloud I normally have. Oh, that's poor, poor yeah, squats, squats, Cloud. Oh. Should have been watching <laughs> Caleb earlier. Should have been <laughs> done. And as you can see here in this uh, tr uh, this car, uh, Sephiroth has just kind of like an O on his face. It's <laughs> only in the PC version. Yeah. Usually in the uh, in the console version, he just has no face. But uh, they thought that was the best face to have here. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the dragon fight is scripted. I mean, Sephiroth has to attack the dragon twice. But there is some. I can lose a bit of time here because of bad luck. Because if the dragon kills Cloud, which he will if he attacks him, there's a bit of a chance that Sephiroth. Excuse me, we'll cast life two on him instead of, uh, uh -oh. All no, right. we'll see what happens. We don't want life. <laughs> like that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is just, I don't know the exact time, but I lose, I'm just losing a few seconds here just purely because of bad luck. It's not, not possible to lose this fight just because uh, Sephiroth is actually completely oh, invincible. No. By the way, my PB for this there is three. Go. Okay, there we go. Three life twos is my PB for this <laughs> fight. <laughs> One of those things that are just, just out of your control. Well, dragons do have wings, so, so that does make them birds by extension. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready for a marathon of donation comments? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've got them. They're coming fast and furious, as uh, Skate just mentioned. <laughs> uh, we have a $200 donation call uh, from Anonymous that just says, kill them. The animals, that is. <laughs> and just as an update on that bidding war for Super Metroid, which is going to be uh, a couple, about an hour after this game, most likely. The uh, current totals are save the animals, $73,153. Kill the animals, $68,335. Oh, it's getting close. Catching up. For a total of over $140,000 invested that's in determining the fate of approximately three pixels. So that's... <laughs> very rapidly approaching our entire total from AGDQ 2012, which I think is pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it does over the save, kill the animals bid war from last year is I want to say 67,000, although I'm sure somebody could look it up for me. So if you want to get your donations in to determine the fate of those three pixels, you'd better do so um, pretty quickly. But uh, it definitely seems that kill is within striking distance. It's only 5,000 behind where it was previously 9,000. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's worth pointing out here too that I could be using another paralysis dodge setup involving the gate to Shinra Mansion and the NPC that's out in front of it to actually skip this cutscene here. But on the PC version of FF7, if I do that, the game will automatically soft lock or freeze basically during the uh, during the next cutscene after this. It is it, it's it's a bit safer to do on the console PlayStation version. Uh, in that it won't softlock the game, but you'll, you'll be entering Mount Nibble in the flashback without Sephiroth, which uh, makes it actually possible to game over, which I just find absolutely hilarious, too, because Cloud's telling this story, hey, remember ten years ago when I died? <laughs> 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 and then he'd, he'll just vanish, because he was a ghost the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Someday Cloud's dream will end. It's another connection to Final Fantasy X. Oh! <laughs> we also have a $15 donation from That's Fair Zach. Hey, hey Zach. Thank what's you, up, sir? Yeah. And it says, hey, Puexel, hey, Abda, Zach here. Sorry I can't be there this year so we can search on foot for foreign restaurants in below freezing temperatures, <laughs> but I'm surrounded by dragons 85 floors deep in student loan debt. Hopefully we can keep this party rolling and get to one million to help cure cancer. Mm-hmm. I agree. I would love to see you guys donate, say, another $50,000 in the next, uh, oh, I don't know, about an hour. I think you guys can really do it. Oh, yeah. I yeah. have faith. Let's get to work. And we so, have a... Sorry, go ahead. Let me just interrupt quick. So for the encounters I get in the uh, Calm flashback, uh, assuming it's not a preemptive, which none of the ones I get in my uh, manipulation route will be, um, if I if I get really lucky, I can run away before Sephiroth attacks, but that's that's actually pretty uncommon. And usually Sephiroth gets his turn before I run away, and then he casts a spell, which takes longer than running away. So, but I'm gonna, still going to try to run away. Okay, sorry about that. We had uh, eight dollars from Death to Monkeys. It says donating eight because I enjoy Final Fantasy eight. Though my real favorite Final Fantasy game is Bravely Default, which I hope will make a marathon someday. <laughs> Save the animals. Also, hey. Stay tuned. <laughs> hey, Brosentia. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you call a group of doctors that. Uh, oh, oh, wait. Wrong GDQ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Your spirit. I got those jokes Brosentia. for months after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, seriously. Yeah. I regret you brought nothing. it upon yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have a $430 donation from. Uh, <clears throat> me. Um, as promised, $10 per Aus dem Reg in the monorail section of Half Coordinates Vanquish Run. Thank you everyone for an awesome event. Let's soar straight past a million and not look back. Yeah, the uh, Vanquish Run was another really great run uh, to watch this year. That handhold percent. Yeah. <laughs> We also had $20 from Cairo. What's the controversy? The best Final Fantasy is clearly Chocobo's dungeon on the Wii. <laughs> you can't criticize a game with such an adorable main protagonist. Is that the one with butt fishing? Or am I thinking of something <laughs> else? <laughs> you are thinking of Final Fantasy uh, Crystal Chronicles, The Crystal Bearers. All right. Which is a fantastic game that uh, Sir VG and Z-Wing have speedrun. So this next part, or this going through this room here, I could speed up by a second or two by zoning in and out so that Sephiroth just quietly disappears. Uh, but I'm, I'm just for marathon safety. I'm not going to do that because I'd be uh, adding a step or two to the step counter to do it. And we have fifty dollars from Seal. Haven't had much of a chance to watch AGDQ this year due to work, but I'm really happy I managed to catch the FF7 run. Here's $50 for an extremely good cause. Let's make a million. P.S. Best Final Fantasy game is FF7 because nostalgia. Surprisingly, a lot of people saying 7 and not hating on 7. Mm -hmm. It's usually pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. By we the way, $77.77 from Anonymous. I Ooh. love FF7 and I loving the shared insight during this run. Save the animals, save the people, save the planet. Wasn't there a version of this game where this thing became a boss fight? At it's a, um, a di difficulty mod, I believe. Oh, okay. By the they way, added like a fight to this part. I felt my phone vibrate and I bet 
a lot that it was a Doctors Without Borders joke. I know it. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> if it was, donate like ten dollars to tell me, <laughs> please. Well, um, preferably redirect it to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Along yeah. with the and the joke too. <laughs> and we received a one thousand dollar donation Ooh. from Ooh. Brian Ooh. C. <laughs> Thank you very much. It says, I loved this game when I was a kid, but I got chicken when I got to the final dungeon. I'm looking forward to see you blow the whole thing out of the water. Whether we choose to save or kill the animals, the real winner here is the PCF. In the spirit of competition, let's Definitely. help close the gap by putting this towards killing the animals. Yeah. Good man. Hey, I get to do something now. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like we how have... even the game devs are like, oh, this cutscene is too long. Let's add a save point in the center. Of it. One. <laughs> we have $25 from Michael K, which says, fantastic stream again this year. Love to see everyone coming together to spread the word about cancer prevention. While it's clear that Final Fantasy VI is the best in the series, I have a question. What is the longest any percent of a Final Fantasy game at the moment? Uh, the longest any percent of a Final Fantasy right now is absolutely Final Fantasy X, and yeah. uh, that is because there are no cutscene skips. Uh, everyone in the Final Fantasy community was very much so hoping that the uh, 10 10 2 remaster would have cutscene skips, and uh, unfortunately there isn't. So it, uh, it does still stand as the uh, longest any percent run at, uh, I believe Car Car and V still has the world record on the PS2 at uh, 10 hours and 22 minutes. He's, uh, uh, again, Car Karn Which is like an good. hour faster than the record was. Yeah. Like a year or two ago, too. Car Karn is still just still one of the best uh, out there, so definitely give him a follow if you haven't already. We received $6 from Sweet Tooth 706 It says, donating again $6 this time because Final Fantasy VI is the best Final Fantasy. <laughs> That being said, I've never really played the other Final Fantasies, but I started with the best, so I don't have to play the other ones now. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with the seven run. It makes me almost want to play this game. Almost. Oh no, trust me, you'll want to in just a little bit. Yeah. And we received seven dollars from an anonymous donor. Seven dollars from my favorite FF, number seven. When this game came out, I played it nonstop. I swear, my roommates were so close to kicking me out of the house for <laughs> camping in front of the TV. Luckily, I hooked them on multiplayer Goldeneye, and they left me alone. <laughs> Sean Bean squats for the win. <laughs> and we received $51.32 from an anonymous donor. It says, I think you'll agree that 13-2 is the best Final Fantasy. Uh-huh. Uh, get it? Yeah, just, just I got it. sink in got real it. quick. Uh, great FF7 run so far, though. Keep up the good work and kill those animals. So, yeah, pretty much this part of the run uh, here uh, to kind of sum it up, because it's kind of lengthy. Uh, they're trying to, uh, Sephiroth here uh, ends up being the main uh, antagonist in this game, and it's because of this event right here. Uh, he starts figuring out that, uh, like, his, himself really has pretty much been a lie his whole life. Uh, there, he's, not, he's not just a normal human, uh, and he's not even more than a normal human either. He ends up being something a little bit more than that. Uh, that's pretty much what this uh, event here depicts. Um, for those of you that don't know, there's actually uh, two other major uh, prequels and sequels to this game called uh, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII and Dirge of Service Final Fantasy VII. Uh, Crisis Core especially does a really good job of depicting uh, everything that happened before this game, including this event. Um, so if you've ever wondered kind of what's going on, especially in this part of the run, that'd be a really good game to play as well. Just don't, just don't finish the game if you're in a bad mood, though. Oh <laughs> yeah, it's, it won't help you. It's definitely a, a tearjerker for sure. Yeah. And it looks like people are finally getting serious about uh, getting us to that uh, one million dollar mark. We've nice. got a two thousand dollar anonymous round of applause. Right <laughs> and it's 
Sephiroth's so happy too. He's just having trouble expressing himself. <laughs> <laughs> and it simply says, please put this towards getting closer to a million and also killing the animals. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be close now, yeah. And we received nine dollars from Cassie Twenty Two. I'm donating nine dollars because Final Fantasy Nine is clearly the best. I felt more about Vivi and his existential crisis than I have for any fictional character. The score is also by far the best in the series. Every song was memorable. This goes to kill the animals. It's called speedrunning for a reason. And we have Al a almost done right. with the flashback. We just got one more. One more Bane cutscene to go. Ah, oh, you're saying I might have to stop reading donations? <laughs> what a shame. Keep coming. We do have $25 from Antilles58. It says, the best Final Fantasy, BEST, in all caps, is Final Fantasy IX. A perfect mix of new and old, an excellent story, and fantastic music. The Excalibur 2 perfect game run I did last year was among the most fun I've ever had in a game. But my favorite... Final Fantasy, favorite again in all caps, will always be 7. No game will ever touch my heart the way it did. I rented a PlayStation for a week just to play it, and I don't think I put it down for more than 6 hours at a time. And we have... sounds about like my life after I first got this too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I had to borrow a PlayStation from a friend in order to actually play it before I got my own. I did actually, uh, at one point, spend an entire night uh, not sleeping, just playing Final Fantasy VII, and I wasn't even progressing the plot. I was just leveling up in the forest outside of <laughs> Junon Harbor, learning limit breaks. I had to restart this game several times. My dad thought that the way to fix a registry error was to reformat the hard drive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so every time Dead we got ready. Oh my gosh, yeah. I got to the final boss. Yeah, let's go ahead and reformat the hard drive. It's great. <laughs> he was trying to protect you from the terrible MIDI version of One Winged beep, Angel, beep, probably. Beep, 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 beep. People with phones want to pull up the lyrics to One Winged Angel and sing along when I get there, too. That'd be uh, definitely welcome. We're gonna uh, slaughter the Latin. Latin. Mm -hmm. I know. No Being Latin. from Canada, my roaming won't let me do that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I can probably bring it up. Well. Uh, the first time I beat Final Fantasy VII was on a rented PlayStation without a memory card. So. Ooh. Why? <laughs> wow. That's, uh, that's dedication. Three days right straight between me and my brother. I think Reign of Soten had the same, uh, the same issue. We have a $25 donation from Kevin Vongmani. I do apologize if I butchered your name. It says, the plot and soundtrack supersedes any game made prior and sets the standard for any games created after and for more future games to come. Final Fantasy X-2 is sincerely the best game. Thanks to all for such a great week. I woke up super early from Australia to make sure I could catch the whole FF7 run. Alright, so now that I'm back in the present, I'm going to be doing a little bit of shopping here. I'm basically just going to sell off... Uh, Sell off all the equipment and items that I don't need for the rest of the game, and then buy some steel materia along with a big stack of Phoenix Downs, both of which I'll be needing in the very near future. Oh, the run started again. Awesome. <laughs> Just because we have so many donations coming in, I'm going to get one more before I uh, let you have free reign. $8.25 from Sir Rauven. It says, hey guys, here are $8.25 because Final Fantasy 13 was my first Final Fantasy game. And 13 divided by 2 times 1.5 minus 1 equals 8.75, but my PayPal account only has 8.25. 
So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> also, kill those animals because seriously, we are speedrunners. Who wants to waste frames when you can get yourself some meat? So once again there, Proxel's going to save uh, because uh, on the way to the Zalm here, uh, there's once again another chance to get uh, pincer attacks. And uh, those can sometimes kill you instantly and they'll be uh, definitely the bane of Final Fantasy VII runners for sure. Uh, he got an encounter here, but it looks like he's going to kill it to get away from it. It is a back attack. It's a back attack, but that's not as dangerous because he doesn't have to kill anything to run away from it. And then uh, coming up here, Puxel can probably explain a little bit more, but uh, this is called the uh, Midgar Zalon mm -hmm. skip. Uh, the runner we were talking about earlier, Cart7, found this strat, and it's uh, a strat used by every single runner of this game, no matter what category you're running. If I hadn't gotten a fight here, that would have been a really good starting pattern. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, uh, this is meant to be an, a mandatory tutorial for how to catch chocobos, basically, because you can move a lot faster with the chocobo and you can outrun the Midgar Zalem with it. But uh, there's actually several ways that you can get past the swamp without right. a chocobo, and uh, what I'm doing is definitely the most consistent. Uh, here we go. There's this still... is actually a two-part skip, so we'll yeah. see if it gets both, gets both parts. Chase the snake. <laughs> All right, so that's the first part there. He actually skips the sneak itself, and there's also a cutscene skip here that he's going to try to skip. Nice, go. very good. Yeah. 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 Skipping the Zalem is a much bigger deal than skipping the cutscene, but uh, we take everything we can. So yeah, as it was as it was kind of probably kind of obvious, I was basically just opening and closing the menu and then moving while the screen was still drawing. And then uh, as long as I crossed the kind of trigger zone for loading the cutscene, where you find out that Sephiroth has already killed a Midgar Zalem and gotten ahead of you, uh, as long as you're kind of coming in and out of the menu at that point, uh, you can just walk right through without actually triggering the cutscene. Pretty similar to a skip in Chrono Trigger, right? Yeah, yeah. It's similar to the Fado glitch in Chrono Trigger. You're basically using the frames where the, the menu is going in and out, and the fact that you can move during those frames to, to skip over some triggers. All right, so we're pretty much done playing the game as intended now after this cutscene <laughs> here, too. <laughs> now things just get strange. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So I'm going to be using some glitches that only work on the PC version of FF7 that lets you, uh, I think Skade explained it pretty well earlier, that uh, uh, are exploiting kind of some resident memory uh, in the game that uh, to, um, well, you'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Great job, guys. All right, guys, here's where uh, things get weird. All right, run over. So th this category does is categorized as New Game Plus, so we do have a few. Yeah, the rules for this category allow you to use pre-made save files as part of setting up uh, warp, so you do have to still finish the game using the file that you started with. Yeah, that's why this category says New Game Plus, even though Final Fantasy VII doesn't really have a New Game Plus. This is uh, kind of a term we came up with to like just cover what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. sort of a. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here we Rip. go. Yeah. All right, so that was phase one of the first warp. Correct. About to do phase two now. We're do what we're doing here is called a battle mode warp. That file I just loaded um, was a file where the game had basically been glitched out so that it thought that I was still inside the calm flashback with a, a um, mode called no experience activated, so I didn't get any experience from uh, fights. And then um, game, game overing will store the location where I game overed, and then, um, well, you'll see what happens after I win this fight here. Because the game is still in no experience mode, I don't get anything. But hey, now I'm on the far side of Mount Nibble, so I just skip like <laughs> probably like two or so, two, two, two and a half hours Something or like so that. of the game. Yeah. And, and the uh, only reason to go over we're here. We're just getting started, though. Yeah. <laughs> And like I said before, the reason uh, that it's pretty much called a kernel, the reason that that kernel is saved there for the uh, battle mode is, like I said before, in the uh, PC version, uh, you, none of the memory is overwritten during the game, so it, uh, it can remember that. In the uh, console version, it doesn't save that memory, so uh, that's why we can only do this on the PC version. 
and not the uh, console version. So now it might seem weird that uh, we're here at the what most people know as the end of the game. Um, but this is where just everything gets started. Uh, I promise this run's gonna get nuts. Having a party that's completely dead is actually just a matter of using the PHS to swap characters around. Pretty much, you can do that anytime where you don't have to have a cloud as your, or don't have to have a single character as your party leader. So the first anymore. war we did was called a battle mode warp, and Plux will explain that. This one here is called a yuffie warp, and it's the second warp we use in this game. Um, pretty much what happens is if you die in this game and the very first encounter that you get is Yuffie and you kill her, you're, you will see what happens. Uh, and, but that is what a Yuffie warp is and that, again that was discovered by a Neo Heart I believe on accident. And the uh, battle mode warp was uh, found by Zero Kynos. Uh, they're both amazing runners of Final Fantasy VII. Definitely give them follows. Ribbit. Oh, <laughs> this is this is pretty Rock bad person. luck too. Yeah. All right, frog kite <laughs> through. And <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Now we're at the end of the game. Yep. <laughs> now we're in the the northern crater at level eleven. Eleven I want to say. for Claude. Yeah. yeah. A little bit scary while we're here. We have to go down a bit first and then then leave. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> worth pointing out here is that uh, Kate Sith is supposed to be standing here, but you've never actually seen him in the game, and I believe his character data is currently held by Young, Young Cloud. Cloud. Yep. That's so, why it said Faraday again when uh, <laughs> when it was time to choose what direction Kate Sith went, because it, it, it still had Cloud's uh, name set for that character. And it doesn't actually, I believe it doesn't actually get changed until you name Kate Sith right. when you go to the gold saucer. Yeah, so that's, that's why one of those pauses was there, because that's when Kate Sith would be running off screen, but his model isn't loaded, so you can't see him. Sid gets his own character slot, so he's he's just fine. Yeah. But, no, you, but you don't get to name him. As a note, the characters are a little underleveled right now. Just a bit. Yeah. And because of that, there's no way that, that he can beat Sephiroth. So what's going to happen, heading down here eventually, he'll reach a place where um, it'll more or less trigger the game into realizing, hey, we are at the end of the game. Let's go ahead and set the rest of the world so that we're at the end of the game. Um, and that'll allow him to leave and do some other things. Which you'll see in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and pausing the game during that fight was a, uh, um, a, tr a trick to basically kind of let me build my uh, runaway gauge a little faster and um, help me run away before the enemy would get another turn. There yeah, another strat developed by Zero Kynos as part of the route for this category. There are quite a few enemies down here that are pretty dangerous. The whole reason he's, the, one of the biggest reasons he's been using this like step count manipulation in the earlier parts of the game is to manipulate which encounters he gets in the crater so that he can actually not die. Right, and most of these, I'm pretty sure all of these enemies actually will one-shot you. So With any if attack. they have, like, multiple, they have full party attacks, you'll just die. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, there's an enemy here called an Armored Golem, which has, uh, I think, multiple all-targeting attacks. So if I run into that monster, that's a very high likelihood of a game over then. A real game over. <laughs> so, um... A big part of my manipulation route I was doing in Midgar was to um, just to avoid getting that particular fight, along with uh, back attacks by parasites, which is yeah. the other most dangerous kind of encounter I can get. So he just got a speed source from Sid, which is going to be very important coming also, up here in a minute. Mm -hmm. Also, the Mistil that he added. Yeah, the um, Mistil is also very important. Mistil for best armor, in it. Yeah, it allows you to um, dodge many of the attacks. Is it 50%? I believe it's 50% yeah. for uh, evading any kind of attack that's not undodgeable. And uh, I know I've talked with Poxel a few times before this run. I'm sure he would agree that this is probably the most dangerous part of this run. Oh, oh yes. By far. Um, very, yeah. by far uh, yeah. The step manipulation here has to be pretty precise in order to uh, make sure we get the encounters that he expects. Because with the encounters that we expect, we're, it's not 100% safe, but it's pretty much as safe as it's going to get in terms of surviving through this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can hope that he gets this right. It's going pretty good so far. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The most dangerous fight is coming up 
I think, in the next couple screens. The ne it's two, three screens after this one. Yeah. The, the next, this one's actually a little dangerous, too, because it's going to be a back attack by an Araman, also known as an Alemania in this translation for Floating some reason. Eye. Missed, nice. No, that's the misdeal at work right there. Out. He got lucky and then unlucky because he ideally he only wants to get attacked once, but but the first one was a miss, so it was okay. <clears throat> and then uh, for runners of this game on console, uh, most of you know that here, uh, if you're normally at this part of the game, you'd use a glitch called the Save Crystal glitch. Um, however, uh, it, well, the Save Crystal glitch allows you to run around when we were selecting which way to go. Um, but if you use that, um, you are not allowed to go back up that uh, stalag might. I can never remember which one's which. Um, Mites are down, tights are up. But right. Anyways. That's why I had to warp to where I did, too, because I do need to see that party split up cutscene in order to be actually able to leave the crater. And oh, I'm, I'm leaving the crater probably. now, by the way, because, uh, yeah, I, I can't actually finish the game at level 11. I have to do some stuff right. to, uh, to get stronger. And if, once I reach the bottom of the crater... Uh, hold on a second. Um, once I've reached the bottom of the crater, that updates some uh, variables in the game to make it think I've legitimately reached the equivalent of disc 3. So if I leave at this point, I'll have the high wind and full access to the world. So this map, is a really dangerous encounter here. Uh, this is probably the most dangerous encounter in the run. And he yeah, got away, so that's right. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he actually died there in practice. I watched it happen, and he lost about six or seven minutes there. So uh, now that's out of the way. It's pretty much smooth sailing. Uh, yeah. It's really good that he got that. Yeah, as long as I get the rest of the manipulation. Right. Yeah. There isn't really a whole lot of manipulation left, though. Unfortunately, if I did die, th that would not mean the run is over. I would just have to right. basically load my save that I made before doing the Yuffie warp and set it up again. A death in the crater is generally about a five to six minute loss. Fortunately, this encounter is a complete gimme, too, because these gargoyles uh, spend their first turn depetrifying themselves before they'll, they actually do anything. Hey, Barcentia. What? <laughs> what do you call a group of people dedicated to stopping the spread of ballet? The spread of what? Ballet. Ballet? ballet. <laughs> What? What? Just tell me. The Prevent Dancers Foundation. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and, and these are more these are more of those parasites, but hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beca but because of the manipulation that ended up being a preemptive, which is a freebie then, because I can automatically run before they attack me. <laughs> Credit for that one is uh, twenty five dollars from Christopher P. I love I it. think he's been broken for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not nearly asleep enough for this. <laughs> nope. <laughs> ah, echoes of SGDQ. Oh, yeah, I just... Oh, my gosh, that music during SGDQ, though. I almost fell off the couch. It was terrible. Oh, so we had uh, $250 from Damien yeah. P. Perfect crater manipulation. Yeah, that was absolutely yeah. perfect. Yeah. Like we said, that really is the hardest part of the run. That is where your uh, step yeah. manipulation really, really shows if you got it right. Yeah. Oh, notice that ladder, I, that ladder I just climbed up to get under the airship, and it's back. <laughs> so this is my first time actually at the game for the game loading that screen. So it did the version where you normally enter the crater from, uh, uh, or normally enter the airship from above instead of uh, below. We had that, uh, the $250 donation from Damien P said, had to make my last donation during my favorite streamer's run. Good luck with the Thebes, Pool Axel. Congratulations, and thanks to everyone there for putting on another great yeah. GDQ. I've been long desensitized to it, but flying the airship like this is the same speed as like this, like you're normally meant to, and it's just, it's a lot faster and you have more freedom of movement. Well, actually it's the same speed, but you have more freedom of movement because you don't have to turn around. So the the first thing we're going to do here when we get outside the crater is uh, 
fight Om or sorry, Ultima Whip. Uh, who should have been fought once before in Medeal during the storyline, but because that didn't happen, his <laughs> HP is a little bit bugged out. Yeah, it, Ultima Weapon actually has zero hit points at this point. Unfortunately, okay. he doesn't die immediately. You have to. Yeah, you do have to reduce his HP to from a positive number to zero to actually kill him. So what I'm gonna do is be a friend here and give him a potion. So now he now has a hundred hit points, and I've got a grenade left. <laughs> 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 yeah. And you saved it there because. There yeah, because that ultima chance. that ultima beam attack it used. If Cloud didn't dodge it because of the mistyle, then it would have killed my whole party, and I, I just I would have had to reload and try it again because uh, there isn't any way to guarantee that. But it's a pretty fast reload if he kills yeah. you. Remind me why it is that you resurrect your. So he has more targets if he does right. single targeting attack. Okay, I hope Claude dodges this. But oh. he didn't. Oh. Okay. So yeah, that's. All right, on to the next game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super Metroid win. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, don't forget, let's keep trying to get to the million dollars. Please keep donations We're coming We're so in. close. Yeah. Kind of bad, getting kind of bad luck on this second fight. Oh. oh. <laughs> yes. Ultima, <laughs> Ultima has two different types of attacks you can use on the first turn. A single target uh, shot and then the one that hits everyone. It has about 50% chance of hitting Cloud either way. If if he shoots a attack that hits Cloud, he'll or and kills the other two members though, he also has a chance of using Shadow Flare on Cloud and killing him with that. With yeah, because he always does uh, Shadow yes. Flare as a death count. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Right, but not over yet. He's still needs to dodge yeah, Shadow Flare. Because that's why I really don't want him to use Ultima Beam in the second fight, because then Cloud has to dodge Shadow Flare. Miss, 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 miss. Miss, yes. miss, 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 Pulling out the Edwards, Edwards strats right there. Yeah. So if you, if you blinked there, he just got a whole crap ton of experience for Cloud and also for uh, a couple other members. Yeah, of the all party. of my characters that weren't killed by Ultima have you been basically. Yeah, so there's a... Cloud gets 35,000. Except, well, except Kate's hit, though, because he's still glitched out at level <laughs> one. He's permanently Forever at level, level one. one, yeah. Ah, that's okay. And, uh, yeah, so I got a lot of experience, and I also got Cloud's strongest sword, which is the Ultima weapon. <laughs> it's his strongest weapon, and it also gets a attack power bonus based on how much HP Cloud has, so his percentage. See, so yeah, right here, we're going to get a very important janitorial item. Yep. Best item in the game here. <laughs> Somewhat useless with a, without and mop And we have bucket. a mop now. Yeah, and I just also <laughs> got a glitch too, where I think I opened the uh, chest on the same the frame after I gained control too, so it didn't actually do the chest opening animation. Oh, nice. But yeah, the reason we get the mop is uh, pretty much the mop on, in the ground is on top of the item we're about to get, yes. which is uh, probably one of the most infamous items in the game called the W item. Yeah. We're definitely gonna be using that a lot in a few minutes. Normally you can get W item in the return to Midgar in disc two, but uh, if you miss it, um, you can get you can dig it up here instead. There we go, and then we have the key to sector five, and just gonna buy a few things. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with those three items, we're gonna head back to Midgard now, which is why we need that third item, the key to Sector 5, otherwise we can't get back in. And uh, like we said before, uh, we got to Sephiroth earlier. We could have uh, fought the last three bosses in the game, uh, but there's no way we would have been able to survive. So what uh, Puxel's about to do here is uh, compensating for that, and it's called a uh, source duping.
Uh, you can see in his inventory right now, he has a power source and a speed source. And using one of those items we just got from Bone Village, uh, we're going to be uh, getting a lot of those. Um, but it does take some concentration. Yeah, a Saurus is an item that permanently raises one of your stats by one. Pretty useful, but even more useful when you have a lot of them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Normally you can't duplicate them, but he's about to do something that lets you do that. Yeah, because yeah. the, there's a very well-known glitch in the game called the W item duplication glitch, which uh, Normal in, in its basic form lets you get in, basically get up to 99 of any kind of uh, battle consumable item. But because you can't use sources during battle, I have to do something a little more complicated in order to duplicate them. And this is also luck based here, the way he's going to do this. Uh, this isn't guaranteed every time, so hopefully he can get it. Uh, we're going to have to do this three times. And what he needs here is he needs to have one of those sources stolen. Uh, in order for it to be able to be duplicated. Otherwise, you can't because you can't even all these sources during battle. So uh, if one of these uh, thieves here don't steal a uh, source, he's gonna have to reset. That's why he saved outside. So ah. yeah, he didn't get one. Yeah, I get one chance per thief to have them steal one of my sources, which at this point is a 50-50 shot, because I have a total of four items that are possible to be stolen. Uh, potion, Phoenix Down, Power Source, and Speed Source. And then I get one chance per thief to uh, for them to steal uh, one of my sources so I can start setting up the duplication glitch. But uh, if both of them choose poorly, then, uh, I mean, <laughs> if one of them chooses poorly, then I kill it to get the item back and then use a phoenix down to revive it because uh, one of them still needs to be alive when I'm doing the duping. Plus, I'm just a swell guy and uh, want to give them <laughs> a chance to uh, You'll revive leave a thief, their lives. You won't revive it. Leave their life of crime. Yeah, this is a pretty this is pretty random, but th but I mean, uh, it mostly just affects how long it takes to uh, finish the run. They both stole, yeah. Jeez. Jeez. Uh, marathon luck. Yep. Mr. Yeah. MV, are you watching? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a quick moment. I'd like to give an update on uh, save versus kill the animals. Yeah. So this. Uh, bidding war has just surpassed 150,000 oh. dollars. Oh, you guys are already applauding. We haven't even got to the good part of this. Uh, Save the animals is currently at $75,264.62. Kill the animals is currently at $74,836.42. Wow. Oh. They are separated by a total of $430. Right, so so we got a power source stolen there, and that's uh, oh, what we want. But uh, because they stole the potion, I can't do the right. glitch. Ah, too. yeah. Uh, Jeez. Man. They're taunting me. I guess, if, well, if I'd have waited a bit, I could have actually killed him and got then revived him, so I had the potion back. But uh, right. You would have risked having him run away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It would have been a pretty high risk of one of them running away. We're off to a rousing start with this. <laughs> I have to do this a total of three times, too. So yeah. It's, I mean, I've had runs where I've had zero resets at this point, and then I've had runs that are kind of going like this is so far. Another reason for the, say, uh, the reset there is every time you reset, this is a guaranteed first fight for this section. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's running oh, away now, too, because the thieves do have a chance every round to do nothing. So what happened there was after they killed the first one, the second one did nothing for probably, like, at least one or two rounds. And then, um... This is the worst I've seen it. Yeah. yeah this is Marathon luck at yeah. its finest. But, like, I mean, there's, I mean, there's, this isn't going to have any risk of me not being able to finish the run. Right. It's just every one of these resets. It makes me lose probably a good minute, minute and a half. While we're dealing with RNG, we've got $8 from Bjorn Christian Mo, And it says, stalagmite has a G in it for ground. Stalactite has a C in it for ceiling. Just FYI, skate. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a new one. I hadn't heard that one before. It's an easy way. All right, so here we go. So uh, pretty much how the game, I pretty much explained it. 
But on the second item uh, here, uh, if it, the game tricks, uh, we trick the game into thinking that we're redoing our choice uh, for which item we're going to use. So it treats that as that, okay, well, you're not going to use that item anymore. Well, let's put it back in your inventory. Well, we do that a bunch of times, and uh, because of that, you can get up to pretty much the item uh, capacity cap, which is 99 items. Uh, so you can pretty much get as many items of whatever item in the game you want. Yeah, so what? As I mean, long what, as it's stealable. Right. And what's happening here is that uh, the game is giving you the first item back, but it's not actually rewinding all the way back to the first item choice. Yeah. It's fairly sensitive to inputs because if you double tap either A or B or circle or cross here, uh, it'll cancel it out and you'd have to start yeah. over. You'd keep your what, whatever 90 power source you had. But. All right, then he's going to uh, kill the thief. Steal a, you gotta steal a, a speed drink from it first. Oh, that's right. There we go. There we go, and death. Alright. Nice. Part one done. Yep, two more. I got my, uh, I got a stack of power sources, which is gonna make Cloud uh, really, really, really strong. Yeah. Then it's I need to get some speed sources to make him really fast. Yeah. It's actually better to get the power sources first, because then you can just... Uh, use all your power sources and only have three stealable items in right. your inventory instead of four. Uh, if you do speed, we need two stacks of speed sources. So if you get the speed source first, it'll be uh, a little bit harder to get the second. I mean, the same, not as not easier to get the second second stack. Yeah, because I can manipulate getting the same uh, thieves fight every time by resetting in between attempts, but I have zero control over what items they steal from me. All right. We have a $100 donation from Carrie Fry. Ooh. Hey. Yes, thank Who's you, Carrie. Literally right behind the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Does any FF featuring chocobos is my favorite FF since they're the only exception to the birds are jerks rule. <laughs> Much love from behind the couch. Pretty sure both of them just did nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> Speed oh, drink. No. Yeah. So, if you were paying any attention there, you might have noticed just how much harder Cloud is hitting now after those 99 <laughs> power sources. <laughs> one, uh, one interesting property about the Ultima weapon, if you didn't know, is uh, on top of it being incredibly strong and having eight material slots, it gains a bonus to its damage based on how much current HP you have versus how much maximum HP you have, so the more percentage health you have, uh, the more damage it does. Yeah, with 99 power sources, uh, uh, if, I get, if I get a critical or use the death blow attack and hit, I'll pretty much guaranteed to do 99-99 damage to pretty much anything that doesn't have like a barrier spell. At like level 22 or whatever? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> level 25 I think he's at right 25, now. 25, yeah. Yeah. I keep seeing speed. And yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he did, ah. and he did nothing. Wow. This is pretty bad. This is yeah. this might even be a PB for number of resets during right. this part. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing you can really do about it though, so. Yeah. It is a reason why this category is pretty volatile in terms of Finishing times, though. So only, only two more successful dupes to go, both for speed sources. Do -do -do -do. Yeah. Uh, Volgen, do you have a couple of donations you want to read while we're finishing up uh, duping? Absolutely. 
We've got a $50 donation from Fair D, who is our namesake for Cloud, and it says, Funny to see Cloud having the same name as me. Let's kill the animals together. We also have a $12 donation from an anonymous donor. I've always been partial to FF12 because you can program your characters but assume direct control at any time. Also, please think of the animals. You can't eat them if you don't take them with you. I should note that it seems like there might be some sort of push coming in for saving the animals. The gap has just widened a little bit from $500 to around $650. And now it's actually 700. So if you want to, uh, if you want to kill those animals, you better get your donations in. Also, we have a $20 donation from Evil Alien. This is the first time Sean Bean doesn't die. Also, kill the animals. <laughs> Give me that back. Nice. Two thirds done now. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the duping a little bit, doing the inputs for the duping a little bit slower than I could be too, just to make sure I don't make a mistake and double tap any of the inputs, because then that'll just end it completely. And I'm stealing these speed drinks in order to set up doing the glitch again. Yeah, and the subtle thing there is definitely uh, important to make sure you leave one speed source so you can, you're able to dupe it again. With the power source, we only dupe them one time, so you can just use all 99 of them. Yep, now this will be the last set of grinding in order to get speed sources, and then uh, Cloud, Cloud will be pretty fast at that point. Yeah, pretty fast. Basically yeah. faster than the game can even keep up with in some regards. Oh, this is going to be the encounter right here. I'm just calling it. <laughs> just calling it. Miss worked, right? And we have a $100 donation from Legion that says, Shinra was hosting a marathon for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Aww. Aww. But things okay. got complicated. Instead, I'll chip in to help fight cancer by killing nice. the animals, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, applauding RNG. <laughs> this marathon tradition, man. Yeah. Yep. yeah. This speed drink actually has use other than just having something to steal. Yeah, so he'll be, he'll be stealing one more and then duplicating it a few times because he's going to use them, some of them later. What it does is cast haste on one of your characters. He's also going to get a, a spider web to cast slow on one of the enemies. Because time is powerful. We received a $25 donation from Hayden Schiff that says, I keep telling myself, okay, I really can't afford to donate anymore, but I just gotta see those animals killed. Let's save those frames, everybody. And we have a $20 donation from an anonymous donor that says, can we get to $777,777.77 raised before the FF7 run ends? <laughs> I think we can do it if you guys pull through. We've only got about 4,000 to go for that. All right, we're done. <laughs> Yay. <Yes. laughs> all right, so I'm going to hold off for a little bit to actually use all of those speed sources on cloud until I have some other stuff I need to do in the menu. So I'm, I've only got a few, like, two more stops I need to make before I'll be ready to actually go back to the crater and finish the game. This next one I'm basically just doing for marathon safety, which is to go back to Calm and get uh, get a Mega Elixir to dupe a couple of those. Uh, that's pretty much just my kind of guard against getting the worst possible luck on the final boss, which has happened a couple times, as recently as yesterday, in fact. Come on, come on, come on. I don't think you can get that. It seems too no, high. It's up. too high. Oh. Oops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The reason I didn't do this when it was a little more when I was already in the area after the flashback too is that as part of was part of the setting up for the um, source duplication section, I had to minimize the number of stealable items that I had on me in order to maximize my odds of the thieves stealing the sources.
And I'm making a pit stop here to uh, get that death blow material over here. And also get into a fight here and then steal a spider web from this enemy here, which uh, Abda just explained a bit ago, cast stop on all enemies. So yeah, Sid got frozen there, so it's going to be a little bit of a wait until we can start uh, dipping those Mega Elixirs again. Yeah. Now, Aerith is frozen. Everyone's Fortunately, frozen. you don't there game over if you... Uh, it did, I hope it didn't eat the Mega Elixir. Oh my goodness. What happened there? I think it oh. ate the Mega Elixir. Oh no. Uh, I'll, no, I'll just I'll just get another one from uh, from the North Mountain because if, if, if I didn't if I reset again I'd have to redo the last uh, speed yeah. size duping. That was really, you know what that's never, that's happened, never happened before. before yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that he stopped Sid after I'd already uh, started doing the duplication glitch. Puxel ran into a, a, another that didn't happen before yesterday when he was practicing this part where he stole the spider web while he was starting up his his uh, duping for the mega elixir and the spider web took the place of the mega elixir and he started duping spider webs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Sitting in the room for that one. Wow. So yeah, <laughs> little detour, <laughs> another little unplanned detour here to grab another mega elixir that's in this cave here. We have a $99 anonymous donation, which says $99 for 99 sources. Killed in <laughs> Thank you very I'm much. I'm pretty sure there was 297, yeah, 297. sources. <laughs> so if someone wants to do a, the, the 297 to actually, actually uh, accurately depict oh. the sources, that's no problem. Preferably to kill the animals. <laughs> <laughs> Only a joke. Thanks for your do generous well, donation. Yeah, so. It would actually be 296, wouldn't it? Because you only used 98 of them. Oh, that's true. Wow. Uranium yeah. Anchor with the callouts. Uranium Anchor trying to take $1 away from the. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the side of cancer, sir. We have $25 from Grizzle Grant, which says, Not to be pedantic, but choosing not to save the animals is not the same as choosing to kill the animals. <laughs> that said, let's kill the animals. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't pedantic, I guess. And we have $20 from uh, Kosak Rizzi, that says, Loving this Final Fantasy run. Oh no. <laughs> So I wasn't going to say anything, uh, but before we went in that cave, the reason Plux is saved is because in case we got in a pincer, uh, luckily, we luckily he's gigantic. most of those uh, power sources, or all the power sources, um, but he's also going to use this encounter to dupe those uh, items, so it's going to end up working out alright, even though Cloud's Probably running fast. in the wrong direction, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this right. game really has it in for me today. Yeah, mm. perhaps this comment was bad luck. Uh, but it said, my friend is going insane over these glitches. Best of luck for the rest of the run, and kill the animals. Have you used all the rest of your sources already? Uh, I'll do that now, thanks. Yeah. a reminder. There we go. He's very fast, but and very sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's alone in his uh, fastness. Uh, oh yeah, and, uh, sadness status reduces the amount of damage you take uh, by 30% for the trade-off of your limit gauges building slower. But I'm done using limits in battle, so uh, taking less damage is preferred. Yeah, it's one of, what, two status effects that are persistent across fights, the other one being Fury. Fury, I believe. Uh, makes your limit gauge build faster, but it makes you less accurate. Oops. All right, so I could just have gotten back into the airship and gone, flown back to the crater and climbed back down, but uh, I'm going to use Yuffie Warping again to get back to the bottom of the crater because it's both faster and safer and um, has some very lets me show off another cool glitch in the process, too. And you get to kill Yuffie again, so there's yeah. that. <laughs> yes. 
So this, in this file, only uh, Vincent is my only living character in the party, and he's set up with a, uh, his ultimate weapon, the death penalty, and then a bunch of sneak attack materia, which is a, it's a blue um, support materia that makes you have a chance to preemptively attack with the materia it's linked to at the start of a fight. And he has that set up for both uh, steel, which is upgraded to have mug, and then um, exit, which lets you instantly run away from a battle. So, let's see what happens here. Yeah, it has a 100%. The sneak attack material is leveled up enough that you have a 100% chance. So what just happened there, off. actually, was that the Vincent Mug Glitch, as it's called, when you use the Mug command with some of Vincent's weapons, it um, cancels the next battle animation that would otherwise happen. So what's happening here is that Vincent's mugging the enemy, and then on, right immediately afterwards he's casting Exit, which is a spell that lets you instantly run away from a non-boss battle. And uh, to kind of explain this area of the game for uh, those who don't know, we call this area the Final Descent. Uh, and each platform has the same uh, chance of getting an encounter. I mm -hmm. believe it's, uh, what, let's say, 30%. About 30, I yeah. believe. Um, the run that Card 7 got uh, on any percent for uh, console version, mm -hmm. uh, he actually got no encounters. I've gotten that exactly once, too. Yeah. But in this uh, in this route here, um, the... Uh, um, the, the, the number of encounters is actually fixed. It's right. normally random in a single segment run, but just because of the, the properties of this file, it's fixed at always four. And Vincent just had a guilty conscience <laughs> attack and uh, fell over. So another, another consequence of the, the Vincent mug glitch there is the Iron Giant's swinging his sword into his face animation got canceled, so that's why he just like died instantly. <laughs> And th this forest right here, I don't know if we called enough attention to it earlier. This forest here is the highest encounter rate for Yuffie in the entire game. It's 255 over 256, or roughly 99.5%. Basically, if we got anything but her. Which is, pr I'm expecting at this point. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. You said you've gotten that once? I've gotten that once, yeah. I thought I got it a second time, but it turned out to be because I was in the wrong forest. <laughs> All right, and then we just Yuffie warped back to the same fight that uh, Vincent and the other file died on. Nice miss. Nice to you. All right, so <laughs> uh, if you don't remember earlier in the run, about two and a half hours ago, when I told you all to remember those FMVs at the very beginning of the game, uh, technically the game still thinks that we're on disc one, uh, but when this is normally disc three, so because of that, it doesn't really know what FMVs to play, so it just kind of picks some random FMVs from the beginning of the game. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? This looks... This is... This is, this this is, is how I play the game. This I don't is know. Final this is how you play Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> This is, uh, this is a uh, technically a four-part, but we'll call it a three-part uh, final stretch of bosses. This one is Genova Synthesis, and uh, he's going to be using uh, the Death Blood Materia here. I would just like to point out that uh, since he has Eris in his party, uh, she wasn't showing up in the previous scenes because she's not supposed to be there, so the game just doesn't show anything at all. And then uh, this was also a donation incentive here. Uh, like we said, uh, well, I guess I'm allowed to say this. There's a certain point in this game where one of these characters on the screen may or may not <laughs> live anymore. Um, you all donated a, a good amount of money to uh, have her here because uh, under any other circumstances, this is not possible with uh, Sean Bean. Well, okay, Sean Bean. Uh, <laughs> may, may, may or may not die in this run uh, before this point. So uh, <laughs> the fact that she's here right now is absolutely not possible in any other circumstances. So uh, mm -hmm. for fanboys of this game, uh, this is Eris lives. <laughs> I know uh, yeah. people like me and Poixel <laughs> and others kind of get desensitized to it, but uh, it's still pretty nuts. The reason why I'm always hitting with Deathblow too, which normally lowers your accuracy, is because of the Mysteel armor that Cloud has equipped. A, uh, a side effect of it is that it uh, increases your accuracy with Deathblow to basically 100%. <laughs> and you're seeing the effects of the speed sources oh, and power okay. sources. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boom! Yeah, yeah. That's also, for that's also why I lowered the battle speed before that too, because Cloud is so ridiculously fast at this point that uh, I have to lower the battle speed in order to kind of ma to just to get in my inputs fast enough to take full advantage of his speed. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's seeing himself. It's reminiscing. Oh, there's cats. <laughs> yeah. He was on the train crisis. all along. Yeah. <laughs> this is oddly similar to the, the endings for Final Fantasy VIII, actually. He <laughs> regrets his train life. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about her like that? She's right here. <laughs> uh, real quick, I'd just like to make one note. Kill the Animals is now leading by $160. Oh my Ooh. god. <laughs> People thought it wouldn't happen, but... And use it, one perk of using Aerith in this part, too, is that because she has no dialogue program, you actually save a little bit of time on text before you fight Sephiroth, too. Plus trains. Lara Plus trains. <laughs> train. Hype train. That's the hype train rolling into the station. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is uh, Bizarro, Bizarro Sephiroth. Sephiroth. Bizarro Sephiroth usually changes to the other party. We can't let that happen. The other party is not very good. So the goal is to beat Bizarro Sephiroth before he would do that. I got pretty bad luck with Cloud starting ETB. Yeah. And the miss? I miss though. So, uh, this is also another fight in the game that heavily uses the uh, ATB weight trick. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, we, you'd probably die really quickly. If you ever any doubt whether Cloud is going really, really fast, just check his ATB versus Sid's. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Mind, they both have speed drinks on right now. Yeah. Right? Okay, so just because of how bad Cloud's ATB was, so Bizarro is going to get another turn. Hopefully he doesn't uh, do anything too nasty. He's going to cast Bolt 3, it's scripted, but uh, the outcome of that can go a number of different ways. Nice. Oh, miss. That works. Yeah, we're okay. Okay. Right, here we go. Nice. Yeah, good fun. Oh, do we don't have the lyrics for? Oh, I do. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So I guess we're singing "One Winged Angel" in Latin. Yeah. Feel free to sing along at home too. <laughs> uh, I know my friend Desencia said that she and her girls were gonna so sing along with it's this. It's the left side. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce any of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Estwans interi ira ve hementi is the oft repeated lyric. Go away, Ad. No. <laughs> also, Spiderweb is coming to play in just a little bit. Because you can slow Sephiroth for some Sorry. reason. <laughs> gonna be dead before we get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a good point. You very well might be. He won't be. Sephiroth! 
Okay, and we got a long instrumental section coming up, but fortunately... <laughs> we win! Yay! Yay! The singing kill man! It's not time, <laughs> time yet, though. Mm -hmm. So, uh, generally in the Final Fantasy community, we start our runs from a new game to final hit on the last boss. Technically, to us, this is the real final boss, but mm. there is. I basically one won fight. now. There's nothing right. left that can happen that'll make me lose. But uh, after a cutscene coming up here, I do have to. I, I do. Cloud has to fight Cloud. Or, uh, Cloud has to fight Sephiroth inside his mind, and um, there. And then that's the that's the end of the run. Then because you can either um, you can either use Omni Slash on Sephiroth, which is what the game expects you to, <laughs> or you can do nothing, and then he'll, he'll, Cloud will count, automatically counter and kill him, which is what we do in a normal speed run because it's quite a bit faster. But, but people uh, paid quite a lot of money to yes. see Omni Slash. Yeah. Are you guys ready yes. for an epic cutscene where you Omni flow swag. through the live yeah. stream to get to Sephiroth? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, yeah, we've got the 2001: A Space Odyssey <laughs> FMV coming up where we oh, were, yeah. you know, Cloud <laughs> is kind of fall, falling inside his mind to uh, see the last part of Sephiroth's <laughs> kind of conscience trying to take him it's over. very epic. The final hit of Omni Slash is time. <laughs> All right. Bye, <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> yeah. Wait for it. Wow. <laughs> and boom! <laughs> Airbuster was the real final boss. Yes. So yeah, normally here uh, it's scripted where if you don't counterattack manually with uh, your limit break Omni Slash, you just do a normal attack. Uh, but sometimes when we're feeling a little bit uh, show offy, uh, we'll do this. Mm -hmm. But uh, we appreciate you all donating. Yes, to thank see you this. for all the donations. He's only got one hit point, by the way, too. <laughs> this is overkill at its finest. And... and time! time. Wow, beat, cut, got sub a sub-3 three. Three, even with all that terrible luck yeah. <laughs> during the <laughs> sub three with that was really, really, really oh, good. Nice. Wow. That was good. Wow. I will very much take that. Yeah, that was to, good. <laughs> Mr. MB couldn't quite get us there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, the ending is completely normal, sadly. <laughs> it's, uh, the ending is immune to being glitched out by Yuffie warping. But, uh, I think we figured it. If, if it were to be replaced by a, a Disc 1 FMV, it would be Cloud falling from the Airbuster It probably bridge. would yeah. be, yeah. That would be the, that, then you'd, Cloud would fall, and then you'd get the credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or unless the credits got replaced with another FMV. And we only hit it for about half a second, but the uh, donation track was somewhere around 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, nice. 7, 7, 7. Nice. Ooh, nice. It's appropriate. Yeah. Lucky 7. So I assume we're just going to probably move on to Super Metroid at this yeah. point. The hot dog fingers. Not, not quite Super Metroid. Or Pokemon. It's or Pokemon. You know, the okay. bonus Pat, stuff. Cast, yeah. cast bot or whatever. Yeah, so, <laughs> so our next oh, wow. two games coming up, we've got yeah, a bunch uh, of bonus stuff for two okay. bonus yeah, a lot of stuff. donation <laughs> games. We've got Pokemon Green, very, very glitched percent. Uh, <laughs> well, well, it's we'll in be good over company. before you know it. That yes. was Final Fantasy VII. Uh, in under three hours, thanks yeah. to uh, thanks to some wrong warp glitches. Indeed. Big round so, of applause for Flex. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I guess. Definitely. Right, uh, good. Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. <laughs> I guess before I wrap, before we hand off the mic to just uh, round of shout outs to my great couch crew behind me there too check them out on twitch tv as well and um Wonderful. Big sh also shout outs to three people in particular uh neo heart again who originally discovered the yuffie warping glitch that makes this uh makes this super glitchy run possible uh zero kainos who did basically all of the routing to uh make a uh, speed run that uses the glitch to its full potential, and then also Cart7, who uh, found a lot of more optimized uh, battle strategies for the uh, Midgar bosses that are still in this version of the game. Yeah, and I guess on that note, what I was going to say is, please, please, if you do not already, 
follow Plexel on Twitch and Twitter and everything you can. He's pretty much granddaddy Final Fantasy to me. Uh, he, he's run every uh, kind of generation. He uh, organizes the uh, SNES Final Fantasy Relay every year. He's run seven, nine, uh, six. He does all of them, and uh, he's definitely the guy I looked up to when I started re speedrunning Final Fantasy. So please, please, please give him a follow. He's Making me blush. Runner. Thank you. <laughs> so should I just go ahead and stop now? And then. And he really likes Blaster Master, so he's cool in my book. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to go ahead and cut it off now, or? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. All right, everyone. You just watched Final Fantasy VII in three hours. Naturally, the only thing that can follow that up is Final Fan. Uh, sorry, is Pokemon Green in three minutes. If you want to know how that works, stick around for just a few minutes while we get that set up, and then right afterwards, we are going to have the return of Taskbot. With Pokemon Plays Twitch Part 2, no, I did not speak incorrectly. That is exactly what I mean. Following that, we will be having a Super Metroid 100% race between two of the best players in the world, Epically Epic and Sweet Num. You don't want to miss that. You definitely want to get your donations in to determine the fate of the animals. Those three pixels that are worth, as of now, $154,743.24. As well as pushing us towards the one million dollar goal that we currently have, we can get there if you guys keep sending those donations in. Right now, we are going to be going to a Twitch commercial, and when we come back, we are going to head towards Pokemon Green. So stay with us. Thanks for watching.